Hey, dude, you look gorgeous. Honestly? Uh, now I feel like I underdid my shoes. No, 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 no. Well, no, no, you no. look good in your shoes. Okay, let's talk about that. Because I, I like the shoe thing, and you look good in the shoes. And now I'm wishing I wore something other than these uh, beat up New Balance shoes. These were like the first pair of like sporty shoes that I got, and I was stoked. But now they're like the old beat to hell ones. The New Balances. Yeah. I uh, so these you are like a year old, them? year and a half old. I got them for my birthday like two years ago. You know, it's funny. The sisters. only shoes I've ever been given my whole life are New Balances. Like for for a birthday gift, it was a New Balance. My dude, buddy got when them. I got, these? I never would have bought them my whole life, oh, but I got dude. them. It was like, I like them. So and like we them. so which is funny because it was like probably a few months before then mm -hmm. we were up at the Diesel Brothers place and Chuck Norris was there. Chuck Norris, just in a, casually. In a in a pair of New Balances, mm, like oh, dad New Balances. Even better. Hyped, right? Even better. If you see Chuck be, Norris in New Balances, yeah, you can't I was like, feel yeah. like an Indian. Though. You you think that <laughs> these are like lame and everybody bags on him, and then I was like, yeah, hell yeah, you can't. He rocks, dude. He rocks New Balance. He's amazing. Dad. Chuck New Norris. Balance. Talk about that guy, dude. That guy's insane. Well, first off. Let's just here. I'm trying to think of how do we, how do we start this? I don't know. You tell me. How so back You're, in the day? It's your it's your deal. You tell okay, me. Okay, so let's think. So, I I really don't know how to start this. So we're just gonna start like this right now, dude. This is this is Colton Colton Brockbank, one of my best friends, uh, and yet we know nothing about each other, and it's kind of a cool <laughs> story. Like honestly, you ever meet those people and you're just like, yeah. Okay, I, I'm I'm clicking with this. We're guy. homies. It's that. This is this is who Colton is. Colton's a is a down to earth good guy, and we're gonna hopefully learn a ton about you that clearly I don't know. But we're in this amazing building, and we'll call it undisclosed for right now. But uh, it's a I love the location, and this so, guy hooked it up. And so I met Colton through uh, an awesome friend named Jason. And but I, background story, I met colton way back in like high school but i didn't meet him if that makes sense I, a guy i went to school with zach durant shout out to zach bam he bam always would talk about <laughs> is the cool durant. cousin yeah dude he would call it, uh this cousin he would just i would say like hey this guy he's a wakeboard man he's crazy and he's pro and he's this and first off is a kid who doesn't do wakeboarding or the most I do on like a boat is maybe tubing and water skis. I can get up for a second. Which but cool with me. so anyone who could do wakeboarding is automatically a pro, pro person. I just never tried it, but he would always hype you up. And I was like, this guy's cool. And he would show me your highlight videos and your YouTube videos and then stuff. And this is kind of like pre, I think Niger Circus was just maybe starting. It's like getting going. Yep. And it, um, and in fact, he invited me out to, I think it was at the, at the time it might've been Delta Center, whatever it's been, Energy Solutions. But um, it was your, your opening premiere for one of your, what did you call your movies? Not Jackass, so it wasn't but your- my movies. Correct. Okay. Greg's movies. Nitro Circuses, yeah. uh, what would you call them? So, uh, yeah, they had, they had premieres all the time. Like us as kids, man, we would just go to, we thought it was so cool that we were tied in to the premieres, you know? We were like, of course, kids. of course. But yeah, I mean, so yeah, they had premieres. They did, they did them all the time at like Thanksgiving Point. Mm -hmm. They did them at Energy Solutions. They did them all over the place. Yeah. It was cool. And he invited me. And I, I, I mean, we, I don't think we ever physically met or whatever, Dude, but. Was that back when he was working for him? Could have been. Yeah, I think because he was he was doing a bunch of editing for Nitro for. It could have been then. like a year or two. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. invited me to this awesome premiere, and then I just got to see all that, and I was just like, oh, because you know back then it was just Jackass. To be honest, it was just those guys were kind of yeah. doing the stuff. I mean, like publicly, and right. then all of a sudden Nitro started was kind of like that's when it kind of started taking off and became this huge worldwide sensation, um, and that's when I had met basically. Or heard about you and then fast forward to what june Ju when did we go i don't know it was june. like june or july it was like july maybe august Jul this year july last august. year 2019 we'll i met july august july august, Jul august. <laughs> i met this guy and uh, that's the end of the story i, I met you and in the instantly with it i mean this kid changed my life colton changed my life in a weird way that uh has benefited me in so many ways and and i just want to say thank you man Dude, um, I love you. We had a conversation on a boat, and we'll keep it private. Uh, but honestly, it was just basically calling me out on my ship, and then the other half was just basically, it was just everything also I think I needed me to was hear. A badass too. Yeah, because I did. You did. I told and you. you honestly, were that was badass. the yeah, and that was the first time that it. I learned it was okay to feel. I like, I don't know how to explain it, but I came from a family that um, probably didn't have the most up confidence in the world. I always did, and then. 
would get shit on or, you know, or whatever. Or I would have issues where it would be like awesome and then. It wasn't okay to outshine. Bingo. Uh, yeah. that's a, And that's a good way of putting that, man. And so when I kind of met you, I mean, obviously I'd been getting better at it over the years being out of mom's nest and dad's nest. But it, uh, yeah, it affected me, man, that you kind of just were letting me know it's okay to be who you need to be and go shine as bright as you need to go shine and whatever that is. And not feel guilty or bad about being who you are and being a rock star. Um, yeah. And I think it's just that balance too. In my head, it was always the issue, right? You, you can't be super cool and awesome and, and whatever, and not have this ego or be seen as an asshole or, you know, yeah. meeting people or whatever it is that you think other people are thinking about you. And I think when I met you, you kind of let me know in, in ways and just also who you were and watching you and, um, letting, I don't know, just, you had a good, uh, yeah, you just had a good light about you, dude, that I just think was like, oh, okay, this guy's got it. And and it clicked with me. Like I said, we were talking, we talked a little bit before the podcast, trying not to, but honestly, he, uh, <laughs> I just, yeah, you're just really good at analogies and making things click. And I think everyone should also realize that sometimes if you hear something from someone and it doesn't click with you, it's okay because maybe it's just an analogy or someone else has to tell you and then it clicks. That's all. From somebody so, else's perspective. So it's so random to meet you there. And then full, you know, full story back, like, oh, it actually goes way back that I met, you know, through Zach in so many ways that I met you, but. So funny. That was it, dude. And then, and after that, basically, I just decided, like, I, I used to do podcasts back in the day. Some of you know this, some of you don't, but I stopped. And then the only person I would ever want to come back and do it with you was with you, man. Because yeah. I was just like, you are a down earth guy. You have so many life experiences and you're a positive person. I love it. You're optimistic. Okay, everyone has to have the bad days and the good days, but you're <laughs> optimistic when it comes to life, and and you're very optimistic when it comes to others and making sure that they shine too. I yeah. love that. Well, I appreciate that. So thank you. Cheesy. What is, that was a heck know. of a like you really but introduced me. That's my me intro. Good. That was a big intro it's, for that's me. That's my little intro. You really man. Built I think me up, you're, a good good. Good. you're a good dude. You're a good dude. I'm gonna be honest. You're a good dude. I'll, I'll say this: when you when you messaged me and were like, "Dude, we should do a podcast together," I was so honored, dude. Because I yeah, I was super bold, but I'm I'm just bold to people in general. So for some people, when like I say, you know sincere direct sure, feedback sure. or yeah. anything like that they're usually like wow dude you're a dick yeah sure I get but it. that wasn't my intent at all no, no, you absolutely. got that from it totally totally because that's what i needed i needed but, the rock yeah but the truth of it is i also said that and i honestly meant this most talented person that was on that boat you just have so many abilities and so many things and you're involved in so many things and it was just like i mean really the thing i really said was that i was frustrated that you're holding everything back because and you, noticed, you didn't want to outshine noticed. people and it pissed me off. And you me called off. me out, man. And that being said, literally every time you and I get together, I'm like, dude, I'm hyped. Let's go do stuff. Let's I go know. blow things up. Something. <laughs> literally, <laughs> right? I, know, I know, man. But it's, it's just like, dude, I, I was so hyped that you'd tell me to do it. Like I've done some podcasts and been a part of some stuff and I like have loved it. It's always fun. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to do stuff with somebody that's like, Oh, wait, hang on. I've got something too. Wait, wait dude, I've got something too. Because i that's my type of personality. Mm -hmm. and I don't want to ever mull over somebody, but I don't have to ever worry about that with you, which is nice. Yeah. So finding somebody that is just like a, a equal or a challenger mm, on your side of it is it. nice yeah. like that. And mm -hmm. I don't mean that in like a no, 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 no. Uh, any other way besides like you should be with people that make you want to do you really. And not hold back, which is kind of where this whole thing. It's started. a good coach. I mean, that, isn't that what a coach is, right? Like the coach is he's put in his time, he's done his effort, or whatever he's doing, and he feels he's an expert at being a coach. Yeah. But if you're playing basketball, you need that. Sometimes you need the coach to say, "Hey, you got this." Like, well, go, I'm just glad you were Coach Carter for me, dude. Coach Carter. Yeah. I'm glad you. Me were. and Samuel L. Jackson. We got, we, and we motivate people. Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy too. I love it, dude. But dude, I'm I'm hyped. So and I'm glad that we could just uh, the fun thing about at least what I think people would want to hear about is that this is going to be like a mix of everything. Oh, absolutely. From like entertainment side of things to really deep stuff that's mm -hmm. not super fun to chat about. Sure. That's really necessary to chat about to then like the just pumping up and go work hard and do hard stuff. Yeah. Like that's, it's good too. And it's nice to hear that from people. And it's also good to get the really deep crap out of the way and be like, dude, this is why you do this kind of stuff. It's true. Stop doing this. It's true. And then back to like talking about you know goofy movie and things like that dude like i'm so pumped that we just we we're gonna be agree on a lot of what things. we're saying is we're going all over the place we're gonna go all over the, <laughs> this the, is not the a board. podcast that's just one niche about 
coaching, pumping, like it doesn't, honestly, it's going to, like, here's a good example, and here's how this is going to turn right now, paranormal. So, believe in ghosts, don't, doesn't matter. Here's an interesting story about you gotta give the them place that we're first. in. You got to give them backstory of what this place is. So this, the building that we're currently in, so he doesn't know this. Yeah, I'll, I'll fill in the story about how I became aware of this place. He texted me earlier today, sent the location, and was like, hey, we're meeting here. And I was like, sweet. And then I show up, and this building is a building that actually, like, I might have been 12. I have pictures of it somewhere. I'll have to find them. But um, back when I was like, no, nah, I was probably 14. We came here. My mom and dad took me ghost hunting one time. And it was just random because my mom was working at JetBlue, met this chick who was, like, super chick. Okay. <laughs> met this woman, a coworker. And I know it's uh, look. I get we respect women. Channel. That's what I was gonna say. Look, we, we not. We our our wives are absolute badasses. <laughs> they They're are. awesome. They are. We women power, man. We're all women about power. it. Yeah. There's no. Anyways, so don't Chicks ever be dudes, offended. <laughs> whatever. If you don't like our lingo, that's the yeah. Get honestly, and that, it's all positive. <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Yeah. So, so anyways, this coworker this of my woman. Yeah. She uh no she was talking about ghost hunting or something and was going to go. So she invited my mom. My mom's like, All right, let's take him. So we went here. Right next door to the building we're at is a giant graveyard. It's a, uh, I mean, okay, it's not giant, but it's a, it's an old graveyard. The city definitely has old, old bodies here. It's not like a, <laughs> a fresh land. Let's just put it that way. And uh, so my mom invited me. And so we come, you know, it's midnight. And I've never done this stuff in my life. Sure, you've seen like ghost movies or you know whatever. So we didn't know what to expect. But um, but I've always been interested in paranormal. Didn't really have a paranormal experience um, up until this point. So we come here and this building. Um, and maybe I'll have you do a little background and stuff, and then I can come back into it. But so basically, tell me about this building a little bit, because yeah, then maybe so it'll is, click with the experience I had. It was the old Draper School back from like the early 1900s, mm -hmm. and which when we first got in this place, it was so scary, dude. It literally, like, especially where we're at, this is the basement of it. It's like where the boiler room is. And yeah, it dude, looks like the found, Titanic oh, boiler yeah. room. <laughs> like, we were cleaning out some of the area down here. Yeah. And we're, like, digging up, and we found, like, child's toys that have been, like, buried down no. here. No. And, like, no. dude, it's so scary. So scary. So, but this, this school pretty much was abandoned after it was... It used to be the Draper City Hall. This is where I used to come to get my football pads back in the day. Oh, okay. So we came in here and they're still like Alta football helmets sure. and pads and stuff in here, which is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but, dude, it was absolutely destroyed. I mean, the, the gym was actually where John Stockton used to come and practice. No yeah, way. All the time. So it was like his private little place that nobody else would come and play at, um, which was heartbreaking because when we got here, the backboards were smashed and... Rims were torn off, and I was like, "No, dude, it's like legendary." Yeah, yeah, that's a legend. Especially for me, because I was obsessed with basketball when I was a little kid. Yeah, and Stockton's Especially, a legend. Yeah, dude, it was like mailman in the, 96, and the yeah, 98 days. All those guys. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, legends. But yeah. so, but what happened is, so I've been partnered up with Greg Godfrey, dude who started Nitro Circus for years, yeah. and. Um, used to do the shows and stuff a bit, um, but really did a bunch of production work um, and other fun things with old Gregory. Sure. Um, that's dope. Yeah. And so that's dope, by the way. Can yeah, we just talk fun. about that? Like Nitro Circus, this yeah, guy. That's fun. Oh, cool. But he, he uh, we started running things out of his house. He had this old, like, uh, pretty much an old chicken coop he turned into a his station in a way. Sure, yeah. Just like his place to work on everything. Of course, yeah. Now it's like his living quarters. It's kind of sick. But <laughs> yeah, it dope. used to be this dumpy little place that we'd go and edit at and do a bunch of things. And uh, homies that would be coming and staying or Travis or whoever would just come and stay there. And then it just was like not enough, I guess. So sure. they were looking at places um to renovate. They wanted to – him and his ex-wife, they wanted to renovate a new building and get some things – you know, kind of turning in their own fire, just get into another place. And this was sure. about to be destroyed. This place was. Whoa. They're like, look, we're just going to flatten it. So they Put some had this big around. Draper City, you know, council and everything. And they're like, look, we want to buy it. And they didn't want to sell it to Greg because they're like, you're just going to destroy it. So we might as well just flatten it out and sell it. And <laughs> make it you know? Yeah, Nitro Circus in this historical building. Yeah. I can get that. So, of course, that. we come in through here and we're like riding motorcycles through here. And <laughs> <laughs> we totally were doing of stupid course. stuff in here. We're lighting fireworks inside. But it was it was sick. It was a super cool place. Ended up making this thing into our office eventually. Yeah, we yeah. had like two other offices before this, one in the gymnasium, um, then the upstairs of the gymnasium. 
and uh like dude this place is so sick yeah i've got you know friends that are barbers upstairs mm -hmm. and uh friends that are doing a law stuff in another room and fitness things and, and it's it's a way 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 cool place now. Spot. and so anyways uh, it, they made this to be the new godfrey entertainment and then it's kind of been abandoned so yeah nobody really uses this anymore that was my old office and uh, this used to be our old place of doing things but yeah, that was a really long version of saying that this place was the new Godfrey Entertainment. Sure. Slash an investment property for them. It still is for um, his ex-wife, Shelly. She still right. runs this place, I'm pretty sure. That's awesome. And uh, I haven't talked to her in a bit, but she's a sweetheart. So, That's yeah. awesome. Her Sweet. and Andy run this, run this biz. What a cool business. Too. Yeah. So, but, so tell so, me, because just so for the maybe. record, I stayed down here a couple times, and it was terrifying. Okay. Yeah. So tell me I mean, why that's honestly, it should be so, terrifying. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, okay, mind you, I'm 14, yes, but I'm not going to lie to you about the situation. Let me put it that way. Like, I know what I saw and felt or whatever. And and so it was kind of weird. First off, we started the, like, literally right out these windows. Just a little over there is a huge graveyard. Little graveyard. I know I saw that. Still. Basically, graveyard. we're, you know, we're going through and we're just asking questions to nothing, right? Like the air. Like, is there anyone here that wants to talk to us? Is there blah, blah, blah? And, and we saw this one freshly kind of dug grave. Um, and I only knew that because, you know, you can tell the grass had been cut and just sod if you know what that's like. And so, uh, and there's a pinwheel on her grave and there was no wind that night. It was kind of, you know, whatever. And again, this is another thing that can be totally explained through science if you want, that's fine. But we were just asking questions of like, hey, so, you know, I don't, I don't remember what we were asking. Basically, yes, there's a nose and this, the pinwheel would go one way when we'd ask certain questions and all of a sudden we'd ask and they would flip and go the other way, like weird things again. And we're like, oh, that's weird. And then I start getting cocky or weird or who knows, and you're a teenager, you're 14. So you're just like, yeah, if there's anyone here, like push us down, do this, da, da, da. anyways, and just being stupid. And, and I know we were walking and I just tripped. I got, the only way to explain it is my foot felt like, uh, you ever hit a curb? Like you're walking on the sidewalk. Your foot into yep, the curb. yep. And you're like, oh, and you instantly like just fall flat on your just your face. Uh, that's exactly what happened to me. It was the weirdest thing. We were just walking, and I just got like someone tripped me. But I know I felt like a full on like a just a hit. My foot went down. I went down on the grass, and I thought it was the weirdest thing ever. And this was of course after being Dude, cocky record, and being stupid. I hate this kind of stuff. I know. I hate scary well, movies. I love it. I hate but it. But I hate it when it yeah, happens because right. it's one of those things, right? I like, know you, you like this kind of stuff. He's sick like that. That's him. <sighs> I just like, I like weird He's a sick puppy. So basically, sick, I know I'm a sick puppy. <laughs> so you go, anyway, I trip, and I'm like trying to figure out what the heck I tripped over. So I'm like, I'm literally rolling in the grass, like trying to find some weird object that like just, because it was, I mean, to the point that my friends even heard thud, like boom. And so it was like, because I felt like I hit a sprinkler, like a sprinkler was oh. up. Just, I hit a sprinkler and I went straight down. Like, and that's why I was like rolling. I was just trying to find like, is there one weird like object poking on the ground that how this nothing like there was nothing no way that that had happened i wasn't running it wasn't in any way so that was weird and then there's a little like side entrance over here to to this building um basically to the basement so you're yeah to, but it's a long you know right 18 there. 20 stairs straight down and then there's just this door with a little glass i mean i don't know if it's glass anymore but um there was basically a door that would just like you could peek through and see inside of whatever it was at the time um and we peeked through and we didn't even get well first off we didn't even get down the stairs we only got there was maybe eight more stairs till we got to the door um and it was just me and at this point it was just me and my friend because everyone else was like doing their own thing and we just hear like just rattling of the door and and i've never been so scared in my entire life I, I jumped and went straight out and, and freaked out and whatever. And I was like, oh, maybe there were people here or whatever. But it was like pitch black. Mind you, this was obviously previous of all this nice remodeling. And, and yeah, it was definitely abandoned. abandoned. It was 100% abandoned. And it was someone was jiggling the door, not as fast as possible, and banging on the door. And we just booked it back up the stairs. We didn't even get to the, like, the bottom of the basement. <laughs> and that was it. That was the last time I've ever been in this building. Well, I've never been in this building to today. Yeah, well, so full back. circle. What a weird, wild story that yeah. all these like past experiences lead us back to like this point. Yeah. That's a weird thought. That's well, all. and I haven't been in here for a long time, but. So what do you know about this place? Count. I and, mean, I know I spent spooky stuff some time or what? Like, for sure. Dude, no, so we actually had, so when we were doing a bunch of uh, production work, we had the head of marketing here with us from Husqvarna Motorcycles USA. Oh, okay. I'm acting like I know Jenna what that Parker. means, but I... she is she's awesome, freaking <laughs> rad chick, and she is so into scary crap. 
and I'm not. Sure. And she's like, dude, we need to come and do like some seances sure. and like do some. And I'm yeah. like, no, we don't, dude. <laughs> You're like, no, we're good. No, we're gonna go get wings or something. Yeah, exactly. And go ride motorcycles. She and wants do to talk to. Things. I don't want to talk to anybody that's not around. <laughs> exactly. It's the last thing on my list. <laughs> I'm not trying to bring anybody back. Dude. Right. They can stay there. There's a reason right? they're there. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. And so, but she, yeah, dude, she's like, yeah, there's some serious spirits here, and we're like, yeah. And there was like a ghost hunters thing that was done here years ago. Sure. And, there's for sure some stories that I'm not sure are real or not, but, you know, people potentially being killed here and all sorts of scary stuff. Why wouldn't there? So, <laughs> well, dude, I, so the first night I ever stayed here, um, my wife and I had gotten in a little bit of an argument. Sure, and yeah. I just was like, I'm going to go work. Yeah. And so I went Classic to the boys, office. Yeah. And yeah. I put a, it was like right after Moana went out on digital. Yeah, and yeah. I literally downloaded Moana and put it on repeat. And I could not sleep, dude, because I was so afraid. Sleeping in this place at all, especially prior to. And creaking. By the way, if you're hearing creaking, that's like literally like. Oh, yeah. If I could show you, uh, and I'll, maybe I'll film a little bit and I'll toss into the video and stuff this place because you got to see just how old this building really is. It's yeah. You can't you can't make this today. No, it's, this is it's, cool. It's sick. It's a it's a way cool place and it's freaky, dude. It's so freaky. It hundred percent gives the vibe of a haunted. I used to work at um. There were, well, my first one of my first like fun jobs was a haunted house in Lehigh at the haunted hospital. Well, it was called Lehigh Hospital, mm. and it was um. But it was a legit old hospital. It hadn't obviously been abandoned and very sketchy. But I had some weird, weird, random experiences there too. And this is the only place that I can compare that to. Is dude, it's that it's old. terrifying? It's I just remember old. sitting in there and. Like the movie ended and I was like kind of asleep, sure. but kind of still awake. Uh -huh. And I remember just like sitting up and I thought I heard something and yeah. I just rushed and restarted the movie. And I was like, forget it, dude. I don't even want to dive in. <laughs> yeah. you Because <laughs> I don't I don't like that kind of stuff. I, I don't like because whatever you allow like in. That's a good really way to wrecks it. you. As we're hearing. Yeah hearing stuff. A hundred percent. We just heard. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic, but there was a hundred percent. That you was pretty just be weird. Like that somebody was that's over here, but but it's it's freaky though, dude. Especially when when I first had stayed here, there wasn't really many businesses upstairs yet. There was like maybe two or sure. three. So this, this building yeah, is basically it was alone. pretty much alone, mm -hmm. and I'm down here just like losing my mind at twelve, one, two in the morning, of going. Yeah, everything's cool for yeah. Jerry. Yeah. And I got up at like 7, 7.30 mm -hmm. and then was like, got to get out of here. Yeah. And like sprinted up the stairs, you know, when like you're a little kid and yep. turn off the lights downstairs and sprint up so nobody exactly, catches exactly, you. Exactly, dude. As if like you're the fastest person in the world and if there was a real monster there, he's going to freaking catch you. But yep. I, I did the same thing, you know, I'm what, 27, 28, yeah. 29, something like that so at the crazy, time. Dude. So anyways. This place was scary back in the day. It's pretty sick, though. Yeah, Shelly, you know, she she's the one who designed everything down here, and it's, it's amazing. All the Edison lights and oh yeah, the Edison lights. It's sick, man. It's a it's a cool place. I mean, the whole whole building's like this. It's just, it's really really cool. It's dope. So anyways. I don't know how much you guys want to hear about this either. Yeah. I was just thinking about that, but that's the that's the full circle of the paranormal coming back to this this interesting spot yeah. that here we are. We told so. you we're going to talk about everything though. So yeah, we, that's yeah. true. Yeah, you're you, kind of in for the you, ride. If you're not liking point. it so far, it's okay. <laughs> it's a, yeah, you can bounce out anytime. Yeah, but oh my gosh, on the uh, on on the going back to life things. Yeah, you, Mr. Christian, Christian. Um, I mean, if you guys don't know who Christian is. And haven't heard about who Christian is. Obviously, if you're cluing in, you've probably heard about me or Christian somehow. I'm like trying to just um, keep like a, such a blank face, even though this is like inside. Again, one of the funniest things about me is people talking about me, especially in front of me. I don't know how to take it because I this never. Is great. This I should know. Be great. And then I would love to talk about this conversation because I, I right now, as he's talking about me, feel uncomfortable. Like I'm not worthy for him to say nice things about me. And that's such a dumb, silly thing I won't in then. life. He's really learned no, to be involved. No, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> That's exactly but, <laughs> what I want to hear. Please, more. No. Yeah, yeah, please. Just, well, that's actually okay. funny because people actually do like that. They like to have proof. I, love proved, you I know, really do want to be right. That. But some people want to be right so much that they'd rather just hear the crappy stuff about them because they 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 actually believe part of that. Gotcha. So they'd rather hear that because it <laughs> validates them. And being right to them is like, oh, yeah, I feel powerful that I knew that already. And it's like, oh, that's no. A, that's a weird way to think that's about it, but you're right. They're usually that, that's false funny, beliefs about yourself anyway. That's but funny. It's kind of interesting. But the, the ego, yeah. the human can take it that way to say, oh, well, I already knew that. 
Yeah, well, I like, knew that. It's kind of like uh, Eminem yeah, when he's in that, uh, you know, that last rap battle yeah, where he exactly. basically he doesn't give the guy any ammo because he just spits all the ammo. Dude, because he he's gives, just like, he I am white trash. I am a bum. I am. I do yeah. live in a trailer with my mom. Yeah. All that. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it yeah. because I know Cheddar Bob shot oh, himself. Such a good movie. Come here, eight miles. Away. Anyways, it's a back. great one. Okay. And Eminem's fantastic. I'm guessing we're gonna talk about Eminem through and through. He's gonna come through. So, um, but yeah, uh, meeting Christian. Yeah, I don't know what stuff. that. Means, I know. We're still hearing again. weird sounds, guys. So if you hear him throughout, this is all the time though. Tell us in the chat. Or, I don't know what, that, what people say. Tell us in the chat if yeah, you hear us. Yeah, about us. Ten minutes and thirty seconds. There was a girl who said. Yeah. If you're seeing what do we know? Yeah. If you us, see stuff behind us, let us know. It's either a real human or probably not. Um, That's a good point. Like somehow a real human, ghostly human, still a human, still a ghost. Anyways, I we're we're not gonna go into that because I hate that stuff. So we're gonna okay. we're gonna. So speak. back to me. Back to me. I'll I'll take talk about you. I love Enough it. about me. Let's I'm talk about you. Let's what do, do you think about me, Christian? I'm kidding. That was good, though. I'm ready right. to go. So, um, but, so when we first met, um, Christian was filming and um, learning more about his business down in Lake Powell. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had this big chat on the back of the boat, and then we got out of there. And, it, dude, I had no idea you were into as many things as you do. Music, first off. Uh, we well, just yeah, have music. great connection with music you and me yeah we, it was the weirdest thing we start playing music and every song this kid played was like instantly the same music i'm like, like Dude, who's I, playing I just, this? I was, this yeah i love this and yeah. the same to you yeah, we had this night weird. on the houseboat what we did is oh yeah the wine we, night right yeah well it was the no it was it the well it was the steak night, night right? it was a steak night it was okay. the, one of the last nights so right, it probably yep, was yep, your yep. wine night deal but it was the um what do you call it the I can't even think of the word of what it is. It's called. It was the jazz night. You put on the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The weekend jazz. The albums. weekend jazz album. If you and haven't listened like, to it, snack. Dude, it's we're gonna be homies after that. That was I literally know. the moment I was like, okay, I don't know who put this on, but this is so dope. Because my so my grandpa, total dickhead. He sucked. <laughs> That's all. <good. laughs> he sucked. But he he was really into jazz. So at his funeral, his mm. wake is what we really did. It was in San Jose. Um, Wait, explain that to me. Wait, did you just say wake? It, like a, it was like a wake. Have you ever heard of a wake before? No. So instead of having like a funeral, you have like a wake. It's kind of just like a... Has anyone... A if you haven't heard about this, am I the only person? Tell I'm, us in the chat. Is I'm that a thing still? I don't know. But tell us in the chat. He's, that, <laughs> he's from Utah. <laughs> so am I. What's a wake? So a wake is just like a, you have people come together. Instead of having like the body there and like this big sad event, it's just like... Which is also one of the most depressing things in the whole world is that... Yeah. Yeah. Is that I don't like the funerals for that exact reason. Yeah. Because I think, like, just because you said goodnight, like, doesn't mean that we have to, oh. Yeah, you can be sad. I get it. But at the same time, I don't know if you're going that route, but positive no, celebration is the way I'd want to go. Or throw me in the trash. I like the way. positive celebration side of it. There, There's definitely, oh, this is a good thing. I We're going to disagree and agree on a lot. This is good. Okay. I like this. I love this. And there's part of it that's really good to just, like, part of it's just so that they can grieve and feel Absolutely. like they publicly grieved. And there's a process to it that feels good to do that for okay. sure. Yeah. And I would way rather celebrate life. I hope that when I pass away, people are celebrating instead of mourning. And I think it's going to happen more. always natural, right? You can't control how you, well, you can control how you feel sometimes, but you, if, when it comes to grieving, that's a different yeah. animal. Like that I get hit by a animal. truck tomorrow. Exactly. I mean, there's going to be some. Kobe Bryant. That's a great sure. example. Yeah. Look Dude, at that guy. I grieved his. Who, oh. I never met them. Never met him, but the fact that he had a daughter, and then all the other people that had died on, and, and also a legend, and everybody knows him, and then just the good night, yeah, lights out. But That's he's sad. a great example of like there was a ton of mourning, absolutely. Like NBA games weren't even being played, and yeah. whatever. Anyways, yeah, we I went to my grandpa's wake, and they were playing jazz there. Love it. And so I've I've always had an appreciation for jazz. I just think jazz is cool. It is cool. It's super cool. So it wasn't, when you played the weekend, I was like. Dude, this is it so dope. Back. It was it's so cool. dope. And so I was like, dude, this is cool. How did you know that I would like this? But it wasn't even about me. You just were playing stuff that you liked, and that's when I knew we were homies. I love that. Um, but uh, Christian's into everything. So you got to tell me, tell us sure. yeah. about Christian. Why, why are people going to be so drawn to listen to Christian? What is it that you do? Tell us about your business with your wife. Um, I love it. Hobby stuff. Tell me, tell me some things. Just go about it, dude. Let's hear it. The fast... 
fast version of, of what you're going to get is basically that is this like I'm, Reader's Digest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What it is. <laughs> I'm a, I don't, I'm a complicated human, man. Um, I think we all are. Everyone is. I think that I'm just a. I don't know. I really follow this. Uh, if you if you know what the Myers Briggs test is, basically, if you want to Google me, I'm an ENFP, is what they call it. So I'm ex, uh, extrovert, intuitive, feeling, and the P I'm not gonna ever remember. It's either persuasion or perspective or per- perception. I don't know. One of those P's. I'm all of them. <laughs> no matter what, I, I can do all three. So and and basically on the human scale. Okay, so to compare me, yeah, make sure that's still, sure still going. Yeah. That I'm like a, a so similar people to my personality would be Robin Williams, Will Smith. I'm in good company. I'm in pretty that. good company. Uh, but when you come to TV shows, I'm like Michael Scott. So yeah, it's a little dramatized. Okay, I'm not as crazy as Michael Scott, but we're, I definitely feel very much like a Michael Scott when he cares for his employees. Yes, he's an asshole at times, but he really cares about his employees. <laughs> and so um, when it comes to me, man, it's kind of it's like Will Smith, man. Like Will Smith, I feel like he can do anything. He, um, if he wants to act, he can act. He was a rapper. He was a rapper. He wants to do this. He starts charities. He he motivates people on Instagram now. He has a YouTube channel. Like anything the guy puts his mind to, it's getting done. Robert Williams was kind of the same, but but the hard part is, and I don't know where Will Smith is on this because I don't know how much he, I don't know if he talks about it too much. If he ever gets sad or things like that, but I know that Rob, I mean. Robin Williams killed himself, um, and uh, this is going to get sad or weird, man. I don't know. I've had a struggling, weird, interesting life where I can very much relate to where Robin Williams was probably when he passed. And and I remember I met Robin. I was lucky to meet Robin Williams at Sundance like um, a few years before he passed. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was kind of a wild story, but like I just bumped into him, and, and that all happened. But but. The thing about us is we, when we're on our highs, we're on our highs, right? You might see me on Instagram if you know me or you don't know me and, and whatever. It's I'll have my highs and I'll be awesome and you'll see this funny Christian. And then behind the scenes, there might be, oh, no one liked that video. No one t- you know, this mind chatter that will kind of go into you. Or or you might say something you felt, oh, everyone needs to hear about this today or this. or, or And from my heart was always like a mo- place of motivation of like, I want to motivate someone so maybe this quote would inspire someone that day. But then 10 seconds later, that Christian could also be, oh, stupid, dumb, don't take it, take it down. What are, and, and I get it. We all do that. That's how we are. But at times I can, on my highs, I can get really low. And so I've been this person that I think has experienced many things in life that uh, emotionally wise, that I feel, keyword, ENFP, and the feeling, and the F, is I feel people. I feel, and they call it empath maybe and things like that. Um, but I can feel people and mostly because I've been there. I've done that. Uh, that's kind of the way to put it. I felt that way. I've had a girlfriend who da da I know da. you don't like I, blah, the blah, word blah. empath, but wouldn't that be like an appropriate word for it, being that you've Probably the textbook explanation of it, yes. Empathy. Yeah. You just feel yeah, it. That's, and I do. Absolutely. I, it could be that there was a three-legged dog yesterday I saw, you know, with this homeless man. I was... I was just driving by, and maybe everyone feels this, right? Like they look and they're not. But I think I take it to another level where I'm like, I'm at dinner. I'm still thinking about this dog with three legs and the homeless guy who's like dragging him around for this ride. And I'm like, just let the dog go, man. Let him like. But Dude, but who am gonna I? Chat about this. We're yeah. gonna chat about this. And just who, so everybody knows, we're gonna dive into this because if uh, you're you're. Not I know I'm not the only one, one experiencing this. At I all. know that people no that are listening to this right now, if they're making it through to this point. That they got through, and now they're getting to the good deep stuff. That's this the key, is the and that's stuff the key here. with our podcast, guys. It might start slow, but it's gonna <laughs> when it hits, it's gonna hit. But this is this is awesome though, because number one, thanks for being vulnerable. This is great. You're going first yeah, in the kind vulnerability of almost got train, right there. which it is was awesome. Weird. I know, I loved that. It was weird. It was good, and it's honest and it's raw. So if you guys are seeing this, just for the record, this is real, and um, people dive into that. What you just said, what you, where you were just going with that whole thing, you are so not alone, and there are so many people that take on all the emotions. There's a lot of people that take on the feelings, and that's where they're like, oh, I'm just feeling so down and blah, 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 and they they almost get depression through other people. Mm. They get anxiety mm. through other people, and it's and, and you've done that. We've talked Absolutely, about that. Absolutely, yeah. And, and you've helped me through that. So just know if you stuff. have this – Listen, because what Colton says yeah. when he spits it, it really make really connect with you guys. So we'll, what we'll do is I'm, we're going to save it for another time sure. for sure. Yeah, sure. But I just wanted to make sure that this is clear. We're, we got to talk about this because this Absolutely. is a huge one. Yeah. Especially being that and you're going to notice it throughout the podcast. Our own experiences. Yeah, it, it's probably way more powerful to learn 
together even on this so that people just can see it and Absolutely. relate to it. It's, it'll be cool. Yeah. So we're going to dive back into that another time. No, that's, please do. That's yeah. huge. I think huge. it's a whole podcast on its own. That's yeah. A, that's a long one. That's a, it's a good one. Yeah. And, and I can relate to it too because I used to do it big time yeah. and sometimes still do. It's yeah. not like I'm like, of course, yeah, you're immune turned, to it you now. You just turned it off. Yeah. But I wish in it was some way. In a way you kind of do though. And sometimes you just allow it to come back in because it's almost like you want to. And that's great. But so that's and, a great point. Which is good feedback for you that you sometimes like to feel the misery of others because you don't feel it very often because you're such a positive person. And maybe and dude, see, boom, clicks. You're hundred yeah. percent right because when you say that, it's a uh, yeah, that is that's really sometimes how I can be when I'm on my highs. I'm on my highs, but I feel guilty sometimes about being. Uh, maybe too happy when I see uh, like my friend, he's like, oh, I gotta go find me because we can't pay our bills this month and blah, blah, blah. Then it takes me right back to like, I can be having an awesome month and doing good and, and proud of myself because I'm really working my ass off. But at the same time, I see another buddy who's hurting and that hurts me. Because yeah. I know I, no one wants to see people get, at least, I don't know. I don't like to see people get hurt or struggle or whatever because I've been there, man. And boy, did it sting, it hurts, it sucks. So when you see another friend that's like struggling or hurting and you want to just like literally, can I just jump in your body for like 15 minutes? Let me let me, let me kind of you. do my thing and then we'll see if we can start you on this other path. Well, and I even heard but you on hard. the phone earlier. We won't say who it was no, with. No, it's fine. Yeah. But um, you were on the phone earlier and it's like, oh, hey, do you need me to help you with this? Do you need me to give you money for this? And the truth of it is, it's really not necessary. A lot of the time it's like, dude, sick. Get that. I'll help you sell it. Mm -hmm. Something, whatever. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're so good at just pushing into it, which 99% of the time, people are going to look at that and be like, dude, you're such a giver. You're so awesome. What you won't see and what a lot of people won't see, which we're going to talk about in the future. Sure, yeah, yeah. And we're, I'm going to cut this just so that we go in a different yeah, direction. Because I want to make sure get, we get other topics. Well, in. I want to get – this is a whole new thing for everybody. But – People are going to relate to the fact that in doing that, you actually take away from yourself at times and you'll allow yourself to get drugged down. And that's why when you're talking about the whole um, focus on everything, you focus on nothing technically is what yeah, you were saying yeah, uh -huh. earlier. Yep. And that's why it's tough to do that. And I, I've done that same thing because it's like, oh, I need to go save somebody instead of taking care of myself right now. Instead of doing this way, which really, in essence, would probably be more inspiring to that person in the first place because it's like, oh, they can do it. I can do it too. Yeah. And just empowering them and being like, oh, hell yeah, I believe in you. You can do it. You know what I mean? And then here's another funny – and then again, we're going to push past this. Um, but <laughs> one, one more thing to kind of bring that up that just is coming up to me is there's oftentimes where like even – I don't know, lately, that uh, I've had some friends struggle, again, but more on the life or death kind of end of things of like, oh, are they are they mentally really okay? Like, it's just, I just would never want to wake up and, and see on Facebook, rest in peace, so-and-so, right. because I didn't take, and again, it's my brain saying, hey, Christian didn't take 10 minutes, that's why this happened. Sure. But obviously, not the truth. Um, but I do feel I have a gift that I love to share with other people and things. And if they are in those positions, I know it takes me this, you know, yeah, it might take a little bit more energy out of me, but it really might just take a 15, 20 minute hangout of sure. a talk or a, hey, I care about you. I love you, man. Like, yeah. it's okay. Life's been there. And here, let me tell you, you think your story's bad? Wait, I got a story. Oh, a reality check. And I think I assist. But here's the other part of that is when, and maybe this is just my personality, but it's a, there's times where I notice well, I'll go out of my way for everybody, right? Sure. Or and things. And then if I'm struggling or hurting, I hear crickets, right? And, and, and maybe it's just that I'm not, hey, guys, I need help. I'm not feeling happy. Hey, I need friends. So I need blah, blah, blah. But That's another part of this but, we're going to go into. Okay. I, and I, I can't say, wait let's to say, play this let's back. We're going to put some notes just know together. I also this. feel on the other end that way too. And then I feel like I don't get anything back. And so it's like, oh, I give it all, but I get none of it back. But but that's it. I, I, I want to move past this one. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into Just another Just know topic. we're going to put some notes down for some th stuff to talk about next time because this is mm – -hmm. that's a huge – this is a great deep topic on it. Um, and yeah. Truth be told, I mean it, it's hard to push past it just because – I know. You have so much vulnerability with it right now. It's present. So screw it. Let's just go into it. Sure. Because uh, right now you've got... Hopefully it's helped someone yeah. today. That's my hope. We were going to push past it, but you, you guys, whoever's clearing in right now, this is good stuff. And so this is what today's episode is going to be more about. It's paranormal slash uh, <laughs> your activity. So <laughs> <You're> <laughs> just kidding. Um, and, and mine too. Because um, there's... 
there's a power in showing up for people. I mean, I I will say this when I was showing up for um, like that. yeah, and 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 I don't. Uh, what I wasn't saying before is not to show up for people and like you don't need to save people and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there's just a point where um, some of it is just our own doing because we want to avoid taking care of ourselves or the some issue, of the problem, it, really or, the reality the, of life. Yeah. Or sure. um, we want to take care of other people because we're obsessed with being a savior and a bucket filler like you are, which is good. So am I. So yeah. I get that. No, no, yeah, for sure. And um, and some of it is that it just feels good to help people. Um, but uh, whatever the reason of it is, big reason too. all of it encompasses it too because there's multiple things involved. Yeah. And, and part of it is that you wish that somebody would have done that for you when you're feeling that way. So it's of like, course, right? I'm totally yeah. going to show up that way because I would want it to happen for me and for sure save me some of what you don't see is um when you were saying that you feel alone you feel crickets you probably didn't notice the fact that that person actually called you and asked for something they let you know they reached out to you you would have had no idea that's a great point and for people out there that are struggling and if you're feeling like you're at the end of your rope or whatever you got to reach out and and most of the time when people do reach out what they're then really saying is I want to live. That's the great news. That is a great point, man. So the second that somebody yeah. reaches out to you, it's like, hell yeah, I'm in. Yeah. But there are times when nobody's going to reach out. And there's times when you know that somebody's struggling. And you don't ever want the time to be um, that you didn't reach out. Sure. Like what to you were saying. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so example is um, when I was a senior in high school, um, I'd come home from a dance week before Christmas. And my brother um, had been doing drugs on and off. My older brother is one of my best friends. And the week prior to this dance, um, he'd gotten really sick. And my mom was just like, oh, he got sick and yada, yada. And I knew he was using again. Mm -hmm. And I was pissed. Sure. And it was because he and I had kind of partied together, you know. We'd sure. partied in Hawaii. We'd done stuff together. So I was like, it, it, no, he's using. He's yeah. being a jackass. So gotcha. I was pissed. Yeah. So I freaked out at him. I'm like, dude, you're pile of dump you yeah, suck sure, sure. blah 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 and pretty much the last words that we said to each other that day um as he's like upstairs about to go back downstairs was like f you and it was like yeah f you too it was like the last things we sure. said to each other it so then, sounds like very similar to my brother and me but yeah just relationship wise we love yeah, each it was, other but it was like oh, you're an idiot f you dude yes you're sure and yeah okay yeah. f you too bro yeah so then the next week you know fast forward a week it's snowing outside i get home and I can see he's out in his car, and I just knew he was using or about to be using. Sure, sure. Uh -huh. And I had this like super hard like ping of just like, go talk to him, go talk to him. And I was like, no. And this is when you always know. You always know that there's a big deal going on when you like have this conversation with yourself of like, like no, argue back and forth, like don't do it, you shouldn't okay. do it. Uh, that's stupid. All, you yeah, have no totally business doing that, right? When Whenever sure, you get in sure. that place, it's mm -hmm. probably something really good. Interesting. I love that. Yeah. And so, you're right. You're right. And, and it's spot on because you watch. Next time you argue with yourself, you're going to be like, oh, dude, that's so stupid. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah, <laughs> and then you yeah. go and do it and it works out. Yes, sir. But I didn't. And I remember sitting there and I was like, no, I'm not going to talk to him. I'm doing stupid stuff myself. It's not like I have anything better to say. Okay. And so instead I gave him a honk and a wave and then I had this another like, dude, you got to talk to him. And I kind of waited for a second and he waved back and he went, looked into his car, like went right back to his car. And I'm like, yeah, he's trying to avoid me. You should go talk to him. And then I was like, no, he doesn't want to talk to you. You don't need to talk to him. Argued again, went inside. Next day, um, got a text from my brother, a call from my younger brother, pretty much saying, you you know, Dustin's dead. My brother died. And I was like, oh. are you kidding me? Frick, and I was so pissed, so bummed at myself, just like tearing myself up like you should have been there for him, you should have showed up. And and the honest truth is, and I honestly believe this, that I was probably one of very few people that night that probably could have changed something for him. And that's probably why I was put in the position I was. Right? Yeah. And you're and you right now taking it on. Same I know, I love it. I love it. I so love bad. the vulnerability and honesty though. It's good. And and for me, I, I, and I still believe this, uh, you know, I can't change what people are going to do in life. And there's some things that we, we can't make people do things. You can take them to the water over and over and someday they, they just have to make their own choices. Yeah. But I really do believe that I was probably one of very few that could have made a difference that night and I rejected it. 
and um, probably could have been there for him, and maybe not. But it was also the last words that we said to each other was F you. And so it was like, dude, I tore myself apart. I was pissed for so long. I was angry for years and years. And it took me a long time to like actually like let it go. Because I mean, he was, he was like my best friend. He's your brother, bro. Yeah. And and dude, I, I, I used to beat the crap out of myself for it. And... You know, thankfully that uh, that spun me in a way for a while, um, but then turned around and it's like what really shaped up my life was thanks to my brother passing because it was like, dude, I just, you know, no matter where people are spiritually or afterlife or whatever, it's like course, I just yeah. have this hope I get to hang with my bro again. That's my whole of course, thing. Of course. So how do you know he's not with you now? You know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Jesus said. So, speaking of paranormal activity, he's hanging out with us today. Welcome, Austin. I'm just kidding. What up, buddy? <laughs> just kidding. You don't, but, yeah, man. No, but I, and it, he's become, you know, a source of uh, making light of situations. And sometimes is maybe not appropriate, too, but I do. because I. okay, dude. Yeah, it's just the way that maybe I've coped or the way that I like to sure. cope. Yeah. And he was a funny freaking dude, so I know he'd be doing the same thing. He would be making jokes about... Oh, Colton, exactly. that douchebag <laughs> exactly. doing this. Yeah, like, so exactly. I'm gonna do the same thing for him. And exactly. But the that. truth of it is, that's how you respect. When you when you get this feel of like, I gotta show up. It's different than like, oh my gosh, I, I need to save people 24 yeah. seven. There's a difference between that and showing up for people and actually being there for them um, is awesome. And taking on all the emotions of other people, feeling them is great. And being able to empathize with people sure, and, yeah. and feel it out is awesome. Taking on stuff and jumping in the toilet with people, though, isn't healthy. That's true. And that's what I used to do all the time. It is similar feels that sometimes you'll be down for a day or three days at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're like, freak, dude, this is so awful. Yeah. And it's... That, that part of it's not healthy. Yeah. Healthy to get it into a situation, a conversation, a deep conversation with people, get into the vulnerable, deep, muddy, hard stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Helping them get out of that. Awesome. Jumping into the toilet with them doesn't do any good. For sure. And I mean, I I can attest to that because I, I would do that over and over with sure. people I worked with, with uh, friends, with relationships. Back when I was dating, I would stay in a situation that was like, no, I... I kind of deserve to feel this way because I was always positive about everything. Yeah. And and then for a while it was like I didn't feel, especially after my brother died, it was like I don't deserve to feel any happiness. Sure. And so, I mean, I went on a rager for a while and partied pretty freaking hard and had some scary moments. And then it was just like a, God dang, dude, get your life together. You were so pissed at him for doing his stuff. You got to get your stuff together. And it changed everything for me. Um, and the whole reason I bring that whole full swing is just, um, when we jump into the toilet with people, the thing that it says to the people is it's okay for me to be down here. Nobody really does care, which is a really interesting thing because when we're trying to save people and we jump in the toilet with them and we're like, Hey, no, I feel miserable too. And I'm here too. And you're not sure, alone. Sure, yeah. Then it's like an affirmation of like, yeah. It's good to feel sad. It's good to feel bad. Instead of like empowering in a different way of like, you know, maybe with my brother, I could have said, hey, dude, instead of F you, sure. it could have been, dude, damn it. Don't, don't. And like, I love you and I wish that you wouldn't. And sure. like, I want to be able to hang out with you and like, don't die on me. Yeah, exactly. Come do yeah. this or going and doing something, getting better myself and sharing my experience with them that, hey, Things did get better, and I uh, believe you can do it too. Yeah. Because I was being a schmuck at the time myself. Sure, sure. So, anyways, random uh, roundabout way of going into. Uh, no, it is perfect, I think. You could, yeah. Yeah. Some of the other stuff of what you were saying of just like, you know, is it um, is it bad to be an empath? Is it okay to be an empath? Is it feel, do you feel like. Um, Sometimes I feel like it get me. Not made fun of, right? But like that I, uh, if I had a choice, man, there's, I envy people that sometimes can just push through it, right? Like that just not notice it eh, 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 and then just go about their life and just keep buckling down and focusing on their thing. Sure. Because, yeah. But at the same time, those people often aren't, I wouldn't want to be that person. 
Does that make sense? Like, yeah. There's the times where I'm like, oh, man, I, everyone's that way, though. I wish I could do backflips like you do off of, you know, whatever. But I can't. And that's okay because I have my strengths where I have my strengths and I have weaknesses where, you know, it's whatever. And that's where I think I've just learned a lot more. And another theory, I mean, it's kind of the same thing about in the toilet is that um, I think they call it like a Mexican crab theory or something. Basically, if you're trying to like cook two crabs or whatever, put them in a pot. If you put, you know, one's going to start crawling out of that pot and the other one's just going to grab the claw and drag them right back down. They're both going to boil alive. But if there's just one in there, he's going to find a way out. He'll figure it out. He won't have anyone dragging him down to pull him back to, to kill him. He's just going to get off that pot. He's going to figure his way out, and that's it. And that's always been the thing that's been in the back of my head is it's got to, you know, the only way that would ever work is you got to be outside the pot, man. They're yeah. like, hey, homie, come on, let's go. Yeah. But if you're both in it, you're both in it, and yeah. good night. That's yeah. it. You ever heard of the butterfly story? No. You ever heard of the butterfly? It so it's, it's a cool one. There's a guy sitting at his house one day watching a butterfly well, technically a caterpillar for hours is okay, okay. in its cocoon sure. and it's like starting to emerge finally. Mm -hmm. So he just sits down and he's watching this butterfly try to emerge for hours and hours and hours. And it gets to a point where it's like getting through to a point where it's just like stuck and it's not going anywhere. Yeah. And he's sitting there for hours, more hours watching as it's just not doing a thing. Yeah. So the guy is like, dude, he's stuck. I'll just help him, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And so the guy shows up and grabs a pair of scissors and kind of just cuts a little bit of a way through for it to come out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, little dude just emerges really easily, comes out, and he had this withered body and shriveled wings. And then he just kind of waited and he just watched him for hours again through the next day. And he's just sitting there watching this little thing, waiting for him to like, you know, take flight. Sure, yeah. And it never happened. In fact, it just sat there and then eventually it just died as it was. Hmm. And what the guy didn't understand in his kindness and his willingness to help this thing is that it, that was actually God's way of forcing fluid through the butterfly that in the struggle that once it actually came through there, it would push the blood all through its body and through its wings so that when it came out, it'd be ready for flight right away. But he cut all the corners off so that it would be easy so he wouldn't struggle and a lot of times Ooh. when we try to save people and we would try to cut away for them and be like hey dude i know a much easier way this is going to help for you and whatever it's good to show up for people but it's not good to take away their trials in life and all that kind of stuff because a lot of the times the hard stuff is coming to strengthen us yeah a lot of the times the the obstacles are coming for us to figure things out yeah a lot of the times the, you know, the problems to solve were to make us smarter, to make us uh, brighter, you know, wittier yeah. at times. And all the stuff that we're getting put in the way is for an exact reason, for whatever it is. And I mean, there's times where, you know, I've had parents save me when I was younger. Of course. That yeah, probably, sure. They probably shouldn't have. And there's people that of course, cut yeah, their yeah. friends, their kids off from hanging out with me because I was a bad influence. Sure, that was a terrible choice because then I went and hung out with rough peeps or whatever, you know? Great point. That was like, dude, that kid was probably the caveat for me in life and I missed out or whatever. Sure, no. I, and I yeah. cut off other people and whatever. And it's yeah. just, there's, so there's a, there's a power in letting people struggle. But there's also a power in showing up when you need to show up. It's just kind of like love, it's the balance. Wherever thou art, play thou their part. You know, I like that. Play thou your part. That's I love it. that whole saying is just like wherever you're at, play where you're at. And I love it. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what else to say other than like I uh, I love to save people. I love to. Sure, sure. And that's why I do the coaching stuff that I'm doing. And whatever, because I want to be there for people. One of the hardest things for me in doing the coaching that I've done yeah. has been to let people fall and let people fail. It is the hardest thing in the world to do is not to step in and Especially say. Especially as a coach, right? Oh, yeah. Like that feeling because it's your like, job oh, technically as the coach up. to make sure that, you know, it, I mean, we think of coaches, right? If you hire a personal trainer, is it your job to make sure I like get yeah, ripped? do the look, right thing. Come but on. But you're 100% right. Yeah. And... Uh, it, it, I do do the whole like, hey, look, here's how you're gonna, you can do this. Yeah. And if they don't do it, I, I have nothing after that. It's like, yeah, you know what? Show up how you're going to show up. I'm totally cool. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat. You'll figure it out. Yeah. And if they don't, it's not on me anymore. 
And I, I like to show up for people like that, man. I have people that still call me on a daily basis and they're like, Colton, dude, I'm so miserable. And I'm like, sick, dude, figure it out. I believe in you. So that's my question. Quince, well, basically, what's that's why you handle it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I've just that's my issue is I've just got to try to figure out what's the best way to make sure that this person thinks I'm not being a total jackass and blowing them off, but hey man, I care about you, I love you, and I want to see you there's win. There's no one way. There's no one way on how to handle it. It's just that there's and I guess that's a, a great advice for a bucket filler or, you know, a savior of any sort is that it doesn't need to look a certain way in the way that you do help them and you do show up. Okay. Some people feel like you need to s solve the problem. And sometimes it is giving them to, an answer to something that's like, oh, duh, that fixed everything. I don't know why I didn't look for that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times it's actually the word empower is giving power to them. When, when people come to you and they're saying, oh, please help me. They're saying, I don't have any power over this. I need your power. And actually, you're just giving power to them saying, look, dude, I, I believe in you. Yeah, you're trying to give your power to me. But actually, you've got it all. You've already got the answers to it. Yeah. And sometimes that's a lot of the time, actually, the answer. And that's why I think parents, a lot of the time when they're like, yeah, no, you're grounded. And you got to just figure out how to f do this differently. Yeah. And they don't tell you exactly how it needs to look. Mm -hmm. And those that do... Sometimes it cripples the kid. Yeah, the helicopter oh, moms and all that kind of stuff. I, say, I, yeah, I, I can't say names, but I've absolutely seen them. Yeah, so many me friends, too. and it's just, it's sad because it is. And later, do they realize like, oh, it, it through mom and dad being the helicopter mom, or I've got it all sure. handled. They cannot handle life situations. Yeah, that no sufferers like. And, and, really? I'm not, and I'm not saying not to help people of and not, not to. Of course not. Yeah. Whatever. But there's a, like, I think you're saying it's the yin and yang, man. It's, it's balance. It's exactly what I'm the... saying to you right now. It's not, I'm not saying, like, I would say that this is a helpful conversation. Absolutely. Where it's, like, it's clicking with me. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess I don't need to take on everything. It's like, no, feel it. Don't not feel it. Don't yeah. not be vulnerable. Sure, don't sure. not share your emotion that you just shared so freely with everybody. Like, That's not what I'm saying. For real, yeah. And, and, you know, I still shared with you my stuff. I was crushed. My brother died, yada, yada, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've told that story a thousand times to where, you know, I still feel it of every you. time when I say it. But it's not as heavy because I don't I, – I still feel – I mean, sometimes I do. Sometimes I will feel heavy about it. That's sure. not, it's not – But it's a time and a place. It, yeah. It's you like never know when the mood hits. I didn't know yeah. I was going to cry on the couch. And cry oh, dude, but I did it. Christmas this last year and, you know, whatever. It's like, dude, I'll, I'll get super emotional and be like, ah, freaking miss him. And I'll play Coldplay or play some of his music that he wrote. He was a musical genius. Oh, man. We play it and I'll just like sob like a little kid and I'll get my tears out. That's good though. And um, And taking on the emotions on a daily basis isn't helpful. It doesn't do any good for anybody. Well, it definitely doesn't help you get more forward. Like, so there's a good example of the, I heard this on the other day and you have to like, uh, if you've never listened to, they call it like actors round table or something on YouTube, mm -hmm. but they just get like six, seven amazing actors. So this one had like Tom Hanks had the Kylo Ren guy, I forget his name. I feel bad. Um, yeah. Jamie, Jamie Foxx, Shia LaBeouf and, uh, Robert De Niro. Oh, you that posted about this. Maybe, you? yeah, yeah. And honestly, yeah, I posted a little clip. Yep. Yeah. But it's an hour good conversation where they're just asking just about life and uh, just how do they get into acting and everything behind it. And once you – it's brilliant because once you learn, like, a lot about their background stories, one, you relate with them a lot more. You're like – because we see them as movie stars. They hit the big screen and we're like, wow, that guy, Tom Hanks, man, woo. But we don't know anything about Tom Hanks, like, growing up or what he's doing. And so it was interesting because they were – they were bringing up a part about comedy, like uh, just natural comedy and just being how can you make sure that comedy lands right on film and things like that. And they kind of were just bringing up uh, – I don't remember who said the quote and it wasn't one of those guys. But they were – I think maybe it was Richard Pry or something. But they were just basically saying like no one's ever been – you know, like a real comedian. Someone who's really funny didn't grow up with a pool in their backyard. Like they didn't just have a nice like – Mom and dad, oh, here's your PB&Js and here's your... Da -da. Comedy came through the struggle and sadness and, and being able to laugh about it now that we're like, you know, years and years later. But they just said, like, it's kind of hard for a comedian to grow up with the pool in their backyard hmm. because it just, without struggle in life and those, you know, crazy, dumb situations that humans, we always get ourselves into that end up being funny that we can laugh about now, uh, you just... That you can't just be a comedian out of the gate because someone wrote down some notes on you and you're like, uh, knock, knock. It's like, no, you, you got to be knocked down. Like, you have to yeah. be in the dirt to be able to, like, oh, 
And that landed with me. And I was like, you know what? You're right. For the first time ever, I, I learned. Anyways, again, analogies hit with me. And so when I learned and that it was okay to like struggles makes you a badass. Like struggles makes the entrepreneur. Like Elon Musk, dude, his, his dad or his uncle or whatever used to beat the crap out of him. Like I was oh, abused yeah. and all kinds of crazy stuff. And But look at him now. The the Again, flowers come out of dirt, man. Like it's just, <laughs> you've got to struggle in those things. And sometimes it's just analogies that hit with me. But that was a good one. The whole can't grow up and be really funny with like a pool in the backyard and this nice life. And, it's true because if you hear about any comedians, they're always talking about just crazy stuff that's happening. Yeah. It's not like, oh, because you don't have that story. You don't have that experience. You don't have that background. So it's okay. If you're struggling, like you were saying earlier, it's okay. I think it's I feel it, like you were saying. Yeah. Just feel it. Yeah. And it. and don't and don't let it stay for forever either. Feel it out. Um and there's no it's not necessary to just like hold on to it and let it beat you up. Yeah. Same time. Yeah, man. There's a power to being on the same pages with people. There's a power in feeling where people are at and it's good to do that and then take a deep breath and recognize it's not yours. Mm -hmm. It's not yours to take on yeah. and you can't help anybody if you're down as well. It's hard 100%. to pull people up if you're in the dumps with them. For it's sure. It's just impossible to. Yeah. So but uh, that being said though, um, I love how much you show up for people because it, it, I mean, it shows a lot of who you are as a, your character and how you operate in life and really why a lot of good things come to you. I honestly believe that. It's kind of funny because I, um, Rise was, you know, before I got here or whatever, it was, uh, so I sent a friend some crumble cookies just out of the blue. Um, cause he just, I mean, they saw your post about that. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, mind you, when I post these things, I'm not trying to say, Hey, look at me. Look, like uh, I oh, share. I like that you share those things. I, my hope is that someone else sees that and realize, okay, here for me, I feel much better if I'm having a, and my day's been fine, by the way, there's not like a reason I did this other than I just think I love getting surprises from people. It's the most random thing. And I know how it makes me feel. And if it takes me five seconds to make someone's awesome day by just say, hey, I care about you. Love you. Here, man. Like it takes, I didn't have to drive and deliver the cookies or whatever kind of thing. It was just that, oh, because, the, and, and also he had gone out of his way recently for me. And it was this, this nice thing that was just like, hey, man, thanks. But the other thing was right after um, that, I got like the notification it was delivered. I was dropping off Mikel's orders at the post office right here in Draper. And, uh, and I was walking back out because I was carrying four boxes. And so I was struggling. It was this funny, like, normally I pull up to the back of the post office and blah, blah, blah. But this time, because I'm not used to Draper and they don't know me, I just, anyways, did the classic way I used to. So I'm struggling. I'm carrying these four boxes in. And then I drop them. And as I'm coming out, I see this lady. Um, it was much older. She's probably like 65. Karen, oh, huge. I mean, like way bigger box than I had. And I was like, oh, I'm like, hey, can I help you and stuff? And I just grabbed the box from her. And then I went, you know, obviously I gave it and put it where she needed and stuff. And you could just see that it was just like, it was just like, oh my gosh, thank you. But for me, I also feel that I benefited way more than she probably did by just walking out and just noticing I could make that person's day. And also, you know, humans forget to be nice sometimes. I think there's a lot of the internet or maybe social media or ways or whatever, for some reason that I think people are detaching from, um, and, and again, I say this people, uh, but I don't know. I mean, I noticed that I feel a lot of us are kind of detaching away from um, daily interactions or little things like that. And also it, it took me what one second to go right back in, right. put it back down and go back. Probably made a little bit of her day, maybe, or it was helpful. Or Probably least, a lot of her She day. smiled. She made it super thankful. Like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Like, really? You're going to help me? And that was a new, anyways, like I said, walking well, out. You're also I had the in Draper, biggest Utah. Smile. Draper, learn from this. Oh, is it a pro <laughs> yeah. I mean, it I can't be. even tell you how many times I've gone through the store in Draper and, and said hi to people and they don't respond. And, and it's that's like, what makes me sad. Come on, where, dude. Where are the humans yeah. in human? Where, why aren't we, you know, and, and hopefully through this podcast, we try to get that back out of you, yeah. you know, and I, and, and yeah, we're going to freaking challenge day. you just for the record. There's going to be some stuff we're going to do that. for the future. We're going to do some that. good things. That's right. Because we're going to talk about the do big it. three of dating. interactive Ooh. podcast. We're going to talk about some good things. So let's talk about it for one second though. Uh, just, uh, so me, we'll talk about, it's just going to come out throughout the podcast. You're going to have to learn us as you learn us, but yeah, I want to hear about this. Things. You're writing a book. Or I'm writing a, a couple You're of already, them. I'm, I'm in the middle of a couple of them right now. And let's just and get the overviews. Yeah. What is it about? So one of them is really connecting, period, connecting to yourself as like the, the biggest part of it. It's called entheos. Ooh. Entheos is where the word enthusiasm comes from. It's like the Greek 
um, transitive word, sure, sure, yeah. pretty much a word mm-hmm. comes from. It means the God within. So it's pretty cool. That's I like that. And, and, it's a good title. I mean, religiously for me, I just honestly feel like we all are just super creative beings. Absolutely. And we have these gods within us that mm-hmm. are just like when we talk to each other and connect with that side of us, yeah. it's the most powerful part of us. When we do work, when we do relationships, when we do hobbies, and we do anything with that side of us, that's the most powerful part of us. Absolutely. Not just right here and not just, you know, just mm-hmm. grit and blah, blah, blah. But there's there's a, a higher part of us. It's the whole like, hey, show up type thing. I love it. That part of us that mm-hmm. does that mm-hmm. is not... It's not just this Jiminy Cricket in your ear. It's actually something that you just like get. You can just naturally get it. Yeah. I want to help people understand that. So it's going to be a banger because sounds. I mean, connecting is huge to me. I didn't understand it was. In fact, Jocelyn Harward was the one who pointed out how important connection was. And shout me. out to both of them. Yeah. Just just if you They're don't follow awesome. them on Instagram, follow them. Yeah. Which just for the record, the whole way that this thing got set into stone, I I originally started writing a book. Um, and it was going to be about enthusiasm. And so it was going to be called Entheos. And then it took on a whole other meaning. I scrapped the entire book. No way. I was almost finished with it. I started writing it when I was on tour with Nitro Circus. Oh. And then um, I wanted to start this new business where I was going to be doing some consulting and coaching technically, yep. which because that's just what I like to do. You're natural. It's, and it's Jason not... said to me, no, I won't do it. Because I can't trust you. I can't count on you. And I was like, what? Wait, he, what? Like, back up. Sorry, I'm just trying to... So he won't do what? He wouldn't help me market it online and help me I start it. Okay, He okay. said, I can't count on you. And I was like, dude, you're like one of my best friends. Why would you Why would you even say that? It I crushed my heart to hear sure, him sure. say that, right? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, no, I, I'm not going to help you until you go through this thing and figure out your stuff because you're going to change everything the way you do it. And I was like, no, no. It's the classic... Yeah, I know. I'm like, you're a douchebag. Little ego in us yeah. all come out. Yeah. You're a douchebag. And I was so pissed. Sure. And I'm like, whatever. If Taylor goes with me, I'll go. Knowing that Taylor was going to say no. Got you. I'd had, I tried to have her come to Tony Robbins with me. We had a free ticket to Tony Robbins. Didn't go. Whoa. And it, I mean, those are expensive. Sure. And I freaking love Tony Robbins. Who doesn't? Yeah. So I was so pumped. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm not into that kind of stuff. You know, super introverted. My wife. Yeah. Didn't want to go for it. By the way, we literally have like the same wives too. Like yeah. personality wise, it's like more he talks, I'm like... Oh, it's the same. Yeah, she's like, screw that, dude. I do not want to do that. So I go home and I'm like, hey, um, Jason and Jocelyn, we weren't super tight with them at the time. We were, but we were just becoming better friends with them, I guess, at the time. I'd been great friends with Jason for years, but Taylor not really with his wife, really. Mm -hmm. We'd done some stuff. but So anyways, Taylor... um, Taylor, I, I, I asked her, I'm like, hey, so do you want to go do this training? It's like a, you know, two half days, two full days thing. It's called BU. You go and learn how to like show up BU. as yourself. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't really know. That's what they told me. And I'm like, sure. are you down to go do this? It's, you know, it's like, it'll cost us some money to do it. But are you down? And she's like, yeah, sure. And I was like, what? Okay, I was really just hoping you'd shut this down real quick so that I could be right about the fact that I don't need this and you don't need this and yada, yada. Anyways, we ended up going through it. Totally shattered my world. um, Broke down tons of barriers for myself. Saw all the walls that I'd had up in my life. And then by the second part of it, I was in the room with Jocelyn, which made me so upset. I did not want to listen to a woman, number one. <laughs> number two, definitely not Jocelyn. Yeah. I just was like, Jocelyn, she's not a public speaker. She's not this. I'm sure, a public sure, speaker. Sure, yeah, yada, yeah. yada. I'm the greatest. That's It's classic. Right? Yeah, that's us. Yeah. So, and I'd done announcing and I've spoken and whatever. So I was like, dude, come yeah, on. What are you, be what, basically, what are you going to teach me? Yeah, what yeah. are you going to teach me? What am I going to be And yeah. shattered no. my world. Totally changed everything. It was the most powerful four days. Lake Powell, had. same feeling, by the way. When I came Love on, it. I was just, you know, I was, I wanted to film, I wanted to learn, I wanted whatever. But at the end of the day, for some reason, it's the classic thing in your head. It's just like, oh, well, what are you going to do? No, what are you going to do? Blown away. Me? Blown yeah. away. Cool Absolutely stuff. blown away. Yeah. And Jocelyn was a huge part of that for me. For sure. Mine too. Huge. I mean, because I did not realize how important connection was to me. I thought that the most important thing for me, which you don't even know this, but I've always looked at myself as this really funny guy. And I love because I get on I get on the phone right, and yeah, I like sure. to do jokey stuff. Sure, but, of course. Yeah. And I thought that that's where I had the most value for people was being funny, making people happy that way. Okay. Yeah. Which totally was like more of like a conduit for me 
in order to get to, to what actually matters sure. and getting into the deep stuff. And I didn't understand that I had this ability to connect with people, recognize patterns, help people see through things. I didn't know I even had that. Yeah. And other people saw that in me. And that's why Jason was like, yeah, no. And it changed everything from there. That's it changed interesting. changed everything from there. I love it. Everything. So, I mean, it changed the way that I was doing work. Um, it helped us land with Godfrey, a huge account, um, and do some big things. It, I mean, it was huge. It yeah. changed the way that I did everything. Yeah. Including mine and Taylor's relationship. Totally saved it. We were right. on the brink of divorce for three and a half years. Oh. And changed everything. Isn't that crazy? Oh, yeah. I love, and see, that's the funniest part about it is it's just sometimes we just have to pretend that we don't know anything I and know. just re-listen to whatever. And and better yet, it's you got to be open, vulnerable and open. Well, I that think was the thing is, is right? I wasn't really open. I thought I was sure. and preached that I'm a For sure. self-improvement right. guy 101, but yeah. I really wasn't. Sure. I just wanted to, you know, be important and whatever don't yeah don't yeah. We all, man yeah which is a fundamental need be yeah. important we talked about that earlier we before we, we got we on did. this thing but yeah. um it was it was really really cool to actually have somebody give me some sincere feedback and tell me yeah number one colton you're a sugar coder and uh you don't actually tell people the real deal you you lie a you, lot you and think like, about what? the emotion first before the truth yeah of, or how is yeah, this totally person? like oh I'm, how am i gonna be perceived because i want to be liked i love having friends since pal i've been a more of an asshole i'll be honest and a good asshole <laughs> asshole is in what i thought i shouldn't be doing i'm doing and it's actually working does that make sure. sense yeah the old me would be the hence sugar coder sure and the new me with friends, you'll come up with business ideas and these things. And, and again, if you're ever hearing this, please don't, you don't have to stop and don't be scared. Like, oh, Christian's gonna, no, please keep doing the same thing you're doing. But I've just noticed that I, instead of sugarcoating and thinking, eh, like my friend, anyways, had a, a great idea, but if you sold this product for this, this, it just, the math didn't add up for me. And I was just like, man, I don't, I don't think that if you're going to do this thing, it's going to work for you. You're going to do six or seven months of this hard work and this stuff. And it's just, I really, truly don't believe that it's going to end up being a good thing for you. Why don't you focus on this stuff that you're good at? This, this, this. The old me would have been, yeah, man, you can do it. Woo, right. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, but inside I still knew the old thing, which was, I don't think it's going to work for you, but I'm, who am I to say? And also, I don't think I'm ever anyone to shut down probably a dream. But if they're asking for my opinion in reality, kind of like it sounded like Jason and saying, hey, will you help me market this? And he's like, no, because it's da, da, da. Well, then... He, he didn't, it did you a benefit. Yeah. You didn't know it until a minute later or whatever after the ego kind of just takes the back seat. But, um, and it's kind of the same thing. And I've just noticed that I've been happier since calling or whatever, just just flat out saying things that well, I flat out need to it's, say. It's because it's freeing, man. When you're not worrying about freeing, that's a great word, hurting other people or you getting hurt and you just actually do things in life, you just mm -hmm. feel this freedom. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it is. And that's that's my whole thing. So for me, like I just I'm clear on who I am. Yeah. And you'll absolutely. see this everybody's gonna see this through and through as we we chat. You're telling me like, what about you, Colton? If I could state exactly who I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am a connected, um, inspiring um, I mean, I'll say it in a different way. I was listening no, to I these know, guys I, talk they up distract, there. No. Sorry, guys. It, it's, it's exciting up there. Hopefully you can hear us. I'll, yeah. I'll clear up the audio. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing it in post. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was, I'm an inspiring, um, geez, dude, I'm hearing my buddy yeah, talk yeah, up there yeah. now. I haven't even heard, I haven't heard his voice in years, I feel like. He just had a kid, so that's exciting that's awesome. stuff. Yeah, Shout out you to just, Cole. by the way, you just he, had your kids. You just had a kid. Yeah, I just had a kid, so uh, I'm a little bit. And he's a dad, he's inspiring, yeah. and he's a dad. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, you know. Well, we're going to get into, there's a whole dad yeah. episode coming. So anyways, the, my whole thing of who exactly I am, mm -hmm. I'm a creative, inspiring, connected man. It's like, just like, I know that those are my things for me. Strong suits, baby. Creative. I'm inspiring. I'm connected. And I know that when I just show up that way, it's powerful. Yeah. When I actually show up. So, yep. and the thing that it does is when I, by being connected, mm -hmm. I create and inspire freedom for people. And that's what you've been able to feel a little bit. It's what Absolutely. I've been able yeah. to feel. Yeah. For me, the one thing I want more than anything is freedom. I just want to be able to do me and do it how I want to do it. And Absolutely. Absolutely. We all do. By still being open to things, you know? Yeah. Still being open. So anyways, um, 
hopefully. Why do you feel like you're there or not now? Uh, what do you mean? Why Why do you feel that you're not? You haven't had. Do you feel like you have that freedom? And that yeah, you, yeah, no, no, you're, no. You're, I'm saying. Oh, you're at the place now that you feel. Yeah, that way. I just. I. My bad. Yeah, no, no, no. You're I, good. I'm, I'm like, saying wait, that you don't like, feel that way. No, you definitely come I, off that way to me. What I mean is, um, yeah, by being when I show up that way, if I'm not showing up as me, then yeah. I'm totally not. Yeah. So, I got so there are times when I'm 100 percent totally locked in and screwed up and sure, whatever, and sure. like feeling like I just have shackles on me. Even over the it last happens, little right? bit, yeah. I even choose into it. Yeah. Oh, I do too. And I do too. It's even like the choosing I, into I my... feeling the emotion and being down. It's like oh, I just kind of want to feel down. I guess is really what the choice is. It is funny, yeah. Being and around. for me, I I do the same thing. And it is a like, choice. You yeah. don't really realize. I mean. Unless you're like, okay, if your arm gets chopped off, ah, like it's going to hurt. You're going to feel it. Yeah. But sometimes with emotions, it is a choice. It's 100% a choice. Do you want to feel this all the way? Do you want to feel this a little? You gauge how much you want to feel what you want to feel. Well, and there's 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 things that have happened over time for people that create habitual feelings, habitual doings that then repeat the feelings over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And we choose into it over and over without even knowing we do. Absolutely. All in all, at the end of the day, you always have a choice of how you're going to react to everything, though. Yeah. And so for me, in all the stuff that I like to do, I've loved being an athlete. I've loved doing all the stuff that I've done. But man, more than anything, I love just helping people get things and get through hard things. That's my favorite thing. If I Honestly, if I could be Tony Robbins today, that's who I would be. Why? Why not? I, I mean, honestly, well, I love coaching. I love this Cray whole Venture idea of things. Robbins. Cray Venture Robbins. It's, <laughs> it, and in a way, and that's what I'm trying to do. At the same time, as I, I have nothing in life figured out yet. I, I still think Elon Musk has nothing in life figured out yet. We haven't. We there is no finish line. Ah, nailed it. Figured it out. It's and for me, I love that dance of. It's the struggle, man. It's like yeah. what you said. It's the you've got to have the struggles to figure out. And it's the same. There's a, okay. Great Twilight Zone episode. It's a weird random episode, <laughs> but it's about a guy. There's even a commercial about it. They just did it recently. Um, basically, same thing. Let's go pee. Dude, no, I gotta oh, just okay. resituate. Resituate. <sighs> it's getting warm in here. Here, actually, pause for a sec. Well, don't pause. Great Twilight Zone episode. Jumping oh. right back into it. Twilight episode is basically this this guy. You know, he he's a robber. He's running away. And uh, all of a sudden, he kind of wakes up, and he's in this, like, hospital bed. Um, he's running away from the cops, sorry. Um, and then he wakes up in this hospital bed or blah, 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 whatever. And he basically ends up with this – oh, he wakes up in a hotel room or something. And he's like, what the heck? How did I get here? This is way weird. What the – and so he's kind of – and I don't want to give it fully away, but you'll get the idea. And um, – so he's kind of going throughout this and he's in this like nice casino and he goes downstairs and he starts putting some money in the, you know, just in the slot machine. And all of a sudden, um, you know, he wins. He's like, oh, holy crap, I won. This is insane. And so he's so excited. He goes upstairs. He like pops a bottle of champagne. He's he's enjoying it. And then, of course, room service comes. And then he's like, oh, so life's great. Life's great. He goes back downstairs to the casino. Does it again. He plays craps or something. Boom. Wins. Said, what the? This is insane. Keeps winning. And literally, he just goes to machine to machine. And every time, it's just a guaranteed win. And he's like... And he goes upstairs and there's all these beautiful women and everything he's ever dreamed of and everyone's there and everything's awesome and anything he ever wanted was all there. And he's like, this is weird. What's going on? And then he starts to go mad the third day and like just starts going crazy. Like, why? how is it even fun to go downstairs and play the slot machines or win craps if it's always – what? I'm winning every time. The, the women are perfect. They do exactly what I want, exactly what I say or whatever I want. And what the heck's going on? And he finds out he's in hell. It was hell. The whole mm -hmm. time he died, he got shot by the cops on the way out. He's been held the whole time where it's – he cannot feel the opposite. He couldn't feel anything. It was just – I mean he was, right? Like he had, he thought it was all happiness. And then he later realized, like, oh, no, like it's all nothing. Like hmm. he, he was that. in hell. And that was a crazy – it's one of my favorite episodes. And I watched it and was like, oh, oh, we have to feel the bad. We have to have bad stuff happen. What fun! It's like a it's a movie, man. It's just you can't. There's no movie if the whole time like, hey, or a business. Like, right? how fun is it just to say I'm going to do this business? Oh, guaranteed win, success. Everything's been awesome. Right. No struggle, no issues, no problems. Everyone's buying. All your friends are repping your clothing <laughs> and whatever. And Which it's I awesome. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm just who doesn't? <laughs> but who doesn't? At some point, though, 
it hit and it was just like, you know what? No, it's hell. Like to just have everything given and done and blah, 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 blah. Maybe it's a helicopter mom, same thing. It's like, where's the fun in like getting, can I get in trouble? Can there bad stuff happen to me? And and that's when it hit for me. It was just that, you know, we have to struggle through life. We have to have issues and things to make sure. That's what makes you. It's the same back to the comedian thing. It's it's what makes you the best. Yeah. Um, and life wouldn't be enjoyable if it was just one way. It's the yin and yang. It's literally black and white. You got to have the good and the bad. And another great book for all this, too, is the, it's called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, which mm -hmm. is uh, Debbie Ford wrote it. She passed away from cancer. Rest her soul. Um, but amazing woman, and, and the book's just basically about that, the dark side of people that have, you know, the light. Mm. And and how do we go about, basically, how how do light chasers, you know, is it are we supposed to feel bad? Are we supposed to have these bad emotions? Are we supposed to be not optimistic some days? Are we supposed to be an asshole when we have to? Is it what's, and, and one great example that kind of she brought up, um, and maybe this hopefully clicks with someone else, but basically... I always, you know, I try to be the nicest guy in the whole wide world, but um, she brings up this point in this book is if you go and you want to build this brand new house and you sign the papers and the documents say, okay, $200,000 is the house. We're going to build it, by the way, outrageous, like who can build, <laughs> okay, $400,000, we're going to build this beautiful home, here's where we go, sign the paper, great, and the contract's being worked on and now they're going to start building your home. So blah, 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 you know, eight months later, the contract hits you up oh, hey, so we've had some issues and da-da-da, looks like the chandelier and this and this. Anyways, everything starts going up in the price from that agreement of 400 grand. Now it's up to like 650 grand or something. Or, or mind you, okay, maybe another, it doesn't matter. So is it okay for you to be an asshole if someone is breaking the agreement or the issues or the problem with you? It, is there a time and a place where you should be an asshole? Is there a time and a place where it's okay to be, no, that's not okay. Remember when we said it would be this much? This is what you said. Yes, I can do it for and we could do it. There's people in life who I've been that person. Everyone's probably been that person. We've all been trampled on or run over or been screwed over by someone who'd been like, uh, but uh, like it happened to me yesterday, dude. <laughs> I, I tried getting this t-shirt for my kid. The t-shirt I chose that I, anyways, we're at the mall and I picked this one because I wanted to surprise my kid. But the guy gave us a shirt that wasn't, Exactly like the one we just pointed out and said, yeah, that one, it was like, there was some stuff off about it. Mm -hmm. And and I was just like, do I just accept that the guy kind of is breaking that agreement that I agreed to in a way, right? I want this. Didn't give me that. <laughs> do I just walk away and say thanks and pay the same amount? Or do I say, hey, man, like, wait, what's going on with this or this? Like, either one, okay, if you need a discount, it, let's discount. Let's talk about that. Or could you fix it and put the Supreme shirt on this guy, like this thing? And 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 that was kind of just that situation is, is there a time and a place in life where you have to, one, stand up for yourself, right? And two, I think there's also a time and place where it doesn't have to be a big issue, just like, eh. Like, is it a vanilla ice cream or, uh, you know, strawberry ice cream? Are they both great? Yeah. Are you going to go and fight about it? Yeah, it's different. But the book kind of talks about that, that you can be a good, positive person and, and you can still be a happy person but feel sad. You can still be a good, I, I don't know, basically you can have those issues and still be a light person um, mm -hmm. when dealing with dark situations and things like that. And that was one thing that kind of stuck with me was the whole a guy trying to, you know, if he is trying to screw you over on some extra cash and he's trying to make a little bit more, then do you just break the agreement and just say, we're going to go elsewhere? Or do you try to figure that out with him? Or do you just let him say, okay, here's $650,000 instead. Um, and that was one. Now, again, I'm an analogy guy. And that one clicked with me was just like, oh, okay. So when you are in these situations and someone wants to be silly, blah, 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 there's a time and a place where it is okay to walk away and just be like, no, it's just weird. See ya. Um, and that was one thing that always clicked with me. That's all. I like it. Yeah. I like it's it. It's random. Well, Good book, like I said. But um, if you ever struggle with that stuff, it was one that really helped me through realizing the back and the forth of not feeling bad that you're, uh, you know, whatever. You're still a good person, but you can still be, quote, unquote, what people think are bad people in a second. You know, because you don't want to be that guy when you're, I don't know. That's just me. But the book was good. That's all. <laughs> I like I it. It's I so like random. It. I know it's so no, random. I like but, it. There, yeah. So there's uh, there's a uh, with relationships all in all about friend breakups or um, or ending a relationship with a significant other that isn't healthy and all that kind of stuff. There's yeah. 
I mean, there's a lot of pressure of people that just try to and carry that's a great point out. too, right? Like when relationships, sometimes you don't maybe find that that's dating, right? That's trying to figure it out yeah. is you're going to be with someone and you might be in a situation right now where you're dating someone and you're like, it doesn't I work. don't know. It's not clicking. Yeah. It's not clicking. And I can try and I can try, but I still think it's not clicking. Then you got to listen to your heart. Because sometimes, 100%. like you were saying earlier, go talk to my brother. Go talk to my brother. You, you know. Deep down inside, you know. You will dance around the ideas of saying, well, this, 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 that. Well, it could be. But deep down, you really know that, um, you know. Yeah, and if you're feeling all torn up inside and you can't figure things out and you can't really, like, uh, see things. Yeah. Then there's probably something in your life that you need to get figured out real quick, emotionally, whatever. There's a great quote by um, I think it's Brene Brown. She says that when when our hearts are um, closed off and we're shut down emotionally, mm -hmm. then we make emotional decisions because our brains are working overtime. That's a great point. Um, yeah, they're overthinking. Yeah, and so then we make emotional decisions because it's like, oh, I felt something is it's there versus yeah. when our hearts are open, when we're clear emotionally and that side of things, then our brains actually do what they're freaking supposed to do. Yep. And do the problem solving and do the thinking for Absolutely. you. Absolutely, yep. And, um, you know, when if you're in a place where you're not feeling like things are working, it's okay to step away from it. Yeah. There's no reason to stay in a situation like that. I think one of the things that frustrates me the most is people will stay in jobs that they absolutely hate for years and they're miserable. Mm -hmm. And I mean, dude, and it reflects. Don't, there's, don't, don't a, there's no hiding it. Oh, you see it on their face. Dude, it screams it. There's people that they, their marriages go down to the drain because of it. Their, I've got their so many lives go down are... the drain because of their health. Yeah. All sorts of stuff because they, they want to work in a place that they don't actually want to work in. They just stay there because they need the money or whatever. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Instead of like taking a chance and going to a job interview on the one day you have off or the lunch that you had yep. to go and get an interview in another place and get a new job or whatever, start the side hustle or yeah. start a new business on the weekends, whatever that looks like sure. to yep. replace your income. Absolutely. Whatever. But they won't because they – it's just a comfort thing and it's a, That's fear a great way of, to put it, the comfort zone man. yeah it's a fear you of like going out there but people will stay in relationships the same way too oh ooh, and yeah. they'll stay in it because it's like yeah but i may not find somebody else i may Which not is the do the silliest this. thought because oh it's so frustrating it's just your bro yeah so it's not true it's not true That's so not true. but but it's overwhelming it's the same thing an entrepreneur has a similar battle to somebody hey andy hey, how, are how are you? you doing dude good, how are you? good to good. see you man all right, sorry, we're back. We had a little, uh, a little interaction, but we're back. Yeah, the dude that owns the place, really good guy, Andy. Thank you for letting us hang out here for a bit. Um, this is my old office, just for the record. It's not my current office. Yeah, yeah. not our office. No. But we, we look cool in it. Yeah, <laughs> we look we super look cool. Dang cool in there. If you didn't see the picture, it looks dope. Anyways, um, it, what I was just saying was the uh, entrepreneurs have a similar uh, case as people that are in relationships where. It's overwhelming mm -hmm. to have an entrepreneur. You have so many things that you could be making money doing. You have so many options. The endless, endless. And it becomes the, when you focus on everything, you focus on nothing. And That's it becomes true. so overwhelming that you're like, how could I ever do anything? Yeah. Some people don't end up doing much of anything at all. And the it's same it's thing, spinning in circles like oh, a hamster wheel, man. It's the same thing with dating. You now have access to thousands of people every day absolutely you want to get on social media you don't even have to leave your house anymore yeah can you imagine that Dude, like back in the day literally let's talk about it like from the 90s dating i mean at least up even until the, whenever even through the 2000s you're right you're right it, was, it literally you want to meet someone uh you had to, you had to bump into him at the grocery store or you had to know him from school or you had to have an interaction or be introduced a bar, through a friend a party a bar the classic that was dating folks that was dating that's how it was. You had to show up to the college party that was going on or yeah. whatever. And it yeah. was like. Interaction. You see this cute girl that just ding, ding. And it, it yeah. worked and or it didn't shout out work. to Zuckerberg and, you know, yeah, whoever thank else. Yeah, goodness for them. I mean. Now the new <laughs> owner, uh, you know, Justin Timberlake for owning MySpace, you know. Does he? Yeah, he I does. Mean, what did he buy it for? How much? Like a thousand dollars? Like what? Thing. I hope so. <laughs> he bought it for 500 bucks. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> At this point. I, I don't know. My profile's not up still. Talk about a guy that could have gone out on top and just got robbed. I know. MySpace. Oh, what a trip. dude, that thing was so sick. But that's the, that's how you used to meet people. Then it became Facebook and yeah. Instagram. And, yeah. 
Tinder and now, now Tinder, and you have Grindr, so many, whatever it is. yeah, and you have so many options though. Yeah. So it becomes it's become super overwhelming for people, which yeah. is so weird because for me, I see so many options that I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Yeah. You could literally do anything. I feel the same way. I feel so much hope in business all the time, where it's like I could be making five dollars or five thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars. It wouldn't matter. Yep. I would same. feel the same opportunity is always there. Same. And if I were to be in the dating world again, even though I'm married right now, if I went into the dating world tomorrow, I would just know there are so many options. It would be insane. It is. But for a lot of people, they get into the same rut where they're like, yeah, but there are so many options and there are so many people. I just don't even know where to even start and well, what to do. Well, also, they don't even try to have a real relationship with one because they're on, they're mentally onto the next one. Like, they're I think the there one. is a place where people get into that. Well, there could be better out there. there there's, there's the grass yeah, is greener you could over do this, here. But da, 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 you could da. also do this. And, yeah, but they, they chew with their mouth open and I can't stand that. And, sure. you know, yeah. one time they said this and I, you know, they, yeah. I disagree with them on how they would ever raise their kid like this. And True. I can't believe yeah. that you think differently than me at all. Absolutely. Yeah. I hate that yeah. mentality. Just and again, the it's the same thing with that whole heaven thing. You don't want to date yourself. Like you're pretty cool as you are. But you don't want to date yourself because it would be the same thing. It would be like winning the lottery every day. And this, it would be fun, but you're, it's not going to be interesting. No, there's no it's, way. Dude, I married the girl that was the most opposite of me I bingo, possibly could have. Bingo. And, and honestly, that created a lot of hell off the bat. It's sure. the truth. Very normal. We did not me get too. along very well off me the bat. Too. <laughs> I mean, we hated each other for the first three and a half years. I said that, man. But Taylor is a freaking, she's a dope girl. She's so rad. She thinks everything completely different than I do. I love that. I have given her a lot of op- optimism. She has given me a lot of actually do it, actually make it happen. That's my wife thing. 100%. I'm, uh, my, here's how I always say it when people ask me about like me and my wife. It's just that it's, uh, like my head sometimes gets in the clouds. I go up there. My ideas are fascinating. Every, and I'm going. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. And then my wife's that nice person to pull the balloon a little bit back down and be like, okay, but but remember, we got to build it here down on Earth. So yeah. are you thinking dot, dot, dot through? Oh, oh, okay. Uh. Yeah, so I, I see not. the big picture in vision and she thinks, oh, here's step one, two, three, four, five. And and that's why teams work, right? Because yeah. you, if, if it's the same people sitting and thinking about how to do the math problem, but you both don't know how to figure out the math problem, you're going to maybe need someone else who thinks outside the box. Yeah. Who, oh, and that's the best part about relationships. Yeah, 100%. It's you, but it's but it's not. It's, it's supposed to not be you. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So anyways. Um, Your book's about dating. Uh, one of the books is all about dating. The other one's about what was One it? One of them's all about connection. Both of them That's are right. going to be um, technically they're they're going to be about similar things. Of course, uh, like a lot of writers, sure they do like kind of spin offs of but their it's other what you know. and kind of other things. You talk about, but I love if there's one thing I'm most most passionate about is dating in relationships, marriage and relationships. I'm Absolutely. so passionate about Me it, too. dude. I love helping people through their marriage crap and all their stuff and helping people see how they're showing up and things. We just had a kid, one of of my wife's good friends, um, came down to our our house uh, just a few weeks ago, right Mm -hmm. before we had the kid. Mm -hmm. And um, he just had some bummer stuff go on with his wife, showed up to our house and was like, dude, uh, she sucks and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. But and like, you totally time. showed up like this, dude. This is totally your MO. And he's like, yeah, but she sucks and blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah, like, yeah, dude, sure. but you have been showing up like this. And sure. yeah. and just, it it's kind of the same way that you would hope a friend would really show up with you. It's like, yeah, dude, but you've got mustard on your face. How do you expect him to take you serious? Bingo. It, it's That's that a great analogy, mentality. Man. And, and you really know, by the way, you, you know a friend. If you have something in your teeth or something, by the way, and your friend's like, hey, like that's a homie. Yeah. You got a homie. If someone just lets you go out your day looking like a jackass, you might want to rethink your friend a little bit. Oh, there. dude. Because, yeah, you would you want that to happen to you? Would you want to go around the carnival dating the girl and have all this? No. So you have to think yeah. that way. Yeah. Well, and you want to be around the right people. It's true, man. And, and that's... Part of the nice thing about having people like Jason and Jocelyn in Absolutely. your life, they're so bold, so honest. They do not they, care. I've never met feelings. anyone so bold and oh, honest. Yeah. Flat out. I remember the the biggest thing he told me one day when I was kind of – we met up and stuff and we were talking and 
And I was given a basically a bunch of but excuses. Well, this, that, da, 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 of why I couldn't do this business thing that I was doing. Or here's the million hiccups but, that but, you haven't but, thought but, of, but. Jason. Yeah. And then, and I just remember he kind of gave me this whole thing. And he's like, dude, you could have like half a million dollars if you just did dot, 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 dot in like no time. And and my whole thing was like, well, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, no, it's all cool. Like, I guess you just don't like money as much as I do. And, and that hit me because... <laughs> because it's an entrepreneur or someone that's hustling and things. Of course you love money. Of course. But we see right. it as a tool and this option, this thing. So to have someone who obviously is 20,000 billion times more successful than I am, look at me and say, hey, I guess you just don't care about money as much as I do. And then walk away. Whew, that one hit me, man. And that was exactly what I needed. It was a friend who just showed up and says, hey, man, I'm calling you out on your shit right now. Uh, yeah. I guess you just don't like money, blah, blah, blah. And because, and, and since that day, I've I've kind of done that to friends and later they come back and say, hey, man, thanks. Yeah. And that was such a good lesson for me to learn and feel and experience that now I can utilize in my life and share with others. And be like, hey, man, I guess you just, I guess you just don't like it that much, whatever. Because it's powerful when you're honest and you're open and like tell truth. it how it is. Because you, and your body knows when it's the truth. Oh, That's 100%. the thing. You'll say that the ego will come out because you'll fight back. It's when you shut up and you're quiet that you realize he's right. He's right. Or yeah. that's right. And, yeah. and that's the benefit to life. Well, and that's so when that kid came over to the house, we're telling him pretty much everything he needs to hear, not what he wants to hear. Uh -huh. Of pretty course. Much everything he needed to hear at the time. Great. It's point. kind of the whole butterfly needs story thing, hear. right? Yeah. A lot of things. I love that the story. What we want in life yes. isn't always what we need. Yes. You know? Yep. So. You know, for him, it was like, yeah, dude, look, do you want this relationship back? Because they were going to get a divorce, like, sure, right it. then. They sure. were done. Yeah. They had been split up. They were split. They're done. Sure. And he's like, well, yeah. And I'm like, okay, then stop doing this. Stop. Yeah. Go figure this crap out. Go admit. Go get up on top. And I'm not saying roll over and let it just it all happens. be their sure, yeah. way, but, like, actually make a win-win out of this because you've been sucking in this relationship. And he's like, okay. Well, I didn't think you'd really thought much of it. And I'm like, you know, my wife and I are like, hey, we were pretty bold. Sure. We're talking like, in bed we get, that night and then the next far? day. We're like, so, yeah. yeah, I wonder how he's doing. And I was thinking about him that next week. I hadn't heard from him for like a week. It had been like five, to six days. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I wonder how he's doing. And it was the next morning I got a message from his wife. I'm just like, hey, thank you so much for talking to him. And we're going to work on things. And Are you really kidding appreciate me? You. And I was like, dude, heck yeah, dude. And that's the kind of stuff I love. And I'm not saying that no, to that's, like. That's gold, dude. Yeah. And you I'm not saying that, that it's like toot my horn. But no, I'm no, totally no, no, going to no. toot my horn. I love relationships. And I love hitting on that kind of stuff. And that's why I want to share. Because you have the knowledge. And if we can just share it, a little yeah. skill with that person. 100%. If they want to take the action on their own. Yeah. They can fix the situation. 100%. And I just believe that people are way more powerful than they think they are. Absolutely. Same way that Jason said to you. Same way he said it to me. Same way anybody who's been a real friend has been like, dude, step up. Yep. Or that your wife or my wife has said, hey, quit being a douche. Yep. Start doing this. Yep. Start showing out. Start yep. showing up. Absolutely. And anytime that ever happens with somebody, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. And that's essentially what I want to do with – all relationships. So the dating one, 100%. I, I'm so passionate about that. And Absolutely. it'll be about dating, but it's it's transient. I mean, it for goes sure. for... Look at this podcast. It was about one object, yeah. but no, it was about everything. It's universal, man. It's how it goes. It and, does. You and can the same thing is what the, the entheos is all about, you know, figuring out how to connect to people. I, yeah. I just want people to know that they don't have to be alone. And being alone sucks, man. Yeah, Even does. for people that are, you know... Look at celebrities too. Let's just think about this first. One second, a good example. Post Malone, right? Austin Post, oh, yeah. this guy. The guy is 20 what? 23, 24? Or Justin Bieber. Even better yeah. yet. Well, I mean, the, whatever. It doesn't matter. But especially Justin Bieber because he came out about depression and everything yeah. recently. Bieber, on top of the world. The guy makes prints money. I don't even know how many millions he makes literally per minute. He prints money and then here he's the, the sad guy. Right? He comes out, he's sad, and he gets married, but he's sad. And his dopamine, like literally, I think they did like tests and everything on him. Like his dopamine levels have been just to the max for so long, just like revving a Ferrari because he had been, yeah, you do silly stuff. But also, this is a wild, weird life to live in. And, and, and yet, he's the number one guy in the world for, you know, whatever, entertainment and this stuff. But yet, he feels really alone to the point that he's sad. Justin Bieber's sad. Why? He's got cars, Ferraris house lives wives i mean honestly you can get whatever you want in this whole world and yet here here's someone that we view why is this guy sad what, what are you talking about? 
What do you mean, why is he sad? Think about it for a second. Like, the, the guy's on top. He doesn't know if you're a friend or if you're there just to get an Instagram picture to say, I'm hanging out with Joseph Meaver today. Yeah. Are you really his buddy? Are you really just trying to make some money off of him? Are you trying to da 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 um, and, and also, he has a good YouTube series. Check it out. It's actually interesting behind the scenes to kind of see the this side where you don't see in the cameras and the lights. But right. it was one of those things where you're like, you know what? Yeah. Like, it's it's not fun to be... You don't know who's sad. You don't know who's really feeling alone. You may look on the surface like this guy's the king of the world and he's got it all. But behind the scenes, it, that could be a sad dude. And, and yeah. I don't know how that was going to play back into what we were saying. No. But really, the reality was it's the same thing. It's like Post Malone's probably going through that stuff right now. It's great. It's great. He's doing no. good. He's putting out music. Oh, he changes up his music. Now the music sucks. I don't like this. I do like this. I did. The whole dancing around opinions and letting other people in and, and wondering who your friends are or not in this and that and who that I can't even comprehend the, you know, that level of that, that feeling for what these guys are feeling. But um, it's kind of like what you're saying, man. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree no. with you. I, I liked where you just went, so I was just letting. No, no, yeah, speak, it was just, I just liked it. That was just, just one of those things because it's just like you know what you, everyone thinks that the, you can have it all, and that it fixes it all, but it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't at all. You're still human, and like yeah. what you're saying earlier, you can make five grand a month. You can make fifty grand a month. You can make half a five million a month. It doesn't fix life for you. That's just a number that says, yeah. okay, I just get to wear different pants than the guy who's not wearing yeah. the Lululemon <laughs> pants or whatever the stupid. Th it's yeah. just. But, and that's, the people that are the people the that are difference. genuinely happy are the people that are still they're still with people they're still connecting with that's people. That's soul searching, man. That's, that's the, the only way to get yeah, happiness. Yeah, they're, is they're you connecting get to you. themselves. They're connecting to other people. I mean, you, we can take our friend Jason for sure. example. Yeah, yeah. He's a happy dude. He's yeah. a really happy dude. And and the only time that he'll ever get not happy is when he's not connecting to people. I can tell you that honestly. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he'll just connect back and he's he's connected with his wife and he's good and, and whatever. Sure. Same thing just for me. I, I would say I'm the lower tier of money making compared to that guy, you know? Vice versa, of course, 100%. And, and so having somebody that's like, um, you know, no matter where you are in life, you don't want to be alone. And I just want people to see that you don't have to be alone in life. And sure. Being alone sucks. Yeah, it, does. it sucks, dude. It, does. it just straight up sucks. Well, what do you think? What What's the worst thing we can do to anyone in human, like a human, besides death, besides prison? Oh yeah, dude. Solitary confinement is the worst punishment we can ever give a human being. Oh, and people so wonder, bad. oh, I like to be alone. They get on Instagram, post all these funny. No, you don't. Don't yeah. lie to yourself. The yeah. worst thing you can ever do is here, twenty four hours in the cage. Well, yeah, I'll see you later. And that's why. So it's pretty funny. So you look at uh, politically, right? Yeah, sure. There's a lot of people that are pissed off that uh, Democrats want to get rid of the death row and all that, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. And they're like, "Well, it, it's more money. It's this, which is stupid. It, it shouldn't be. It should be the same price." But regardless of that stuff, sure, sure. in my opinion, it is way worse for them to be in prison in life. For life and being there, and just to say good night, alone, go to bed. Then yeah, then for sure, taking them out. And also, I mean, it's the easier route. And just to be safe. How many of those? I mean, for how many years were there people who were convicted of death row who were not guilty? Yeah, because true. of DNA. I mean, later we find out because of DNA true. or people or yeah. or, or racism, mean, right? Like, there's a lot of people that have gone out and done some pretty gnarly stuff. Like I mean, the dude course. from the Boston. Marathon and all that that is oh, I don't know technically that. on death row and whatever, okay. but not at the same time. Oh, and gotcha. It's been a back and forth thing, right? Huh. Anyways, there's stuff like that where it's like, shouldn't we just kill them and whatever? And it's like, the truth of it is, though. Like, well, Ted Bundy, great example, right? That guy's dead. Sure. But how many people did he murder, ruin, all the crazy crap that he did and everything? Now, yes, there's a side of me that says, absolutely, kill this guy. It. Sure, they didn't. and I'm not going to say whether we should have it or not. I don't Correct. care. No, no, yeah, Either way, yeah exactly, I'm open exactly. But the other half is you're right. If this is a person who did can do these horrible crimes, is it the easiest route? What just to say good night? Like, yeah, peace out, dude. We that, just don't that's want not you a here. punishment. That's not thoughtful. Yeah. That's you not can't thinking. sit with us. That's not that's wrong. Yes, thing. exactly. <laughs> it's mean girls. It needs to be in a jail cell, and you need to think about what the hell you just did. Yeah, and, 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 and or get help. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not saying Ted Bunny could get help. And yeah, that he was, probably wasn't. But going the to. safest place he could be was in a jail cell, though he escaped twice. 
crazy which guy. Which is kind of weird. Wild guy. So, so I guess maybe for his sake, that's a different one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but either stories. way, the, uh, the truth of it is, though, you want to be in ultimate hell is be alone for a long time. And whether you're um, an introvert or an extrovert, it's still the same. Oh, no, absolutely. Because you can be um, – confidence goes in introvert – introverted and extroverted ways Absolutely. so that it doesn't matter whether you're an extrovert or introvert or like alone time or not you still don't want to be alone for forever yeah. oh, well, you no still way. need connection yes. people need connection it is so so sucky to be confined and not around people and a lot of people while they're in jail just for the record mm-hmm. end up having these spiritual changes and whatever and uh, these comeabouts that they're like whoa i need this in my life and it's because they're like Dude, I, I never want to feel this again. 100%. I can yeah. guarantee that. And that's not even going off scientific facts or anything. It's a, you what? just look at it. It's like, dude, how come that happens all the time? You you want to be with people so bad. You want to. Yeah. People don't want to be alone. And if you think you want to be alone. Do it. Um, be alone. Yeah. And See, then yeah, show that you That's what happened for me, it. man. It was. Uh, it's not that I thought I wanted to be alone. So like the last – I was telling you you know, the other day or whatever that I kind of took an Instagram break slash sure. – Whatever kind of I don't know what I called it's like it. Like two months um, or whatever you did. Yeah, and it was a weird, um, is a weird experience because there was a couple things I wanted to like think in my head. This is my mentality was, okay, if I disappear, one, who reaches out to me? Like I do this weird game in my head, which is a, it's a game, it's a dumb game to do. So this is what <laughs> happened, and you're hopefully this lesson will help somebody. But basically, I'm like, if I just go missing, man, no one's gonna care, no one's gonna talk to me, it's gonna, or or whatever, or my real friends will still no. Let me just tell you something. I win MIA. A lot of people didn't notice at all. You don't. And also, you have to, you got to think Instagram algorithm for that because you can just disappear from people's, you can still follow people, but you can be buried and never see anyone's posts that you're usually friends with and things like that. So here I am thinking in my head, oh, they're just going to miss me oh, or whatever, kind of dumb stuff that you kind of tell your head. And little did I know, nah, it wasn't. Nobody and and I was alone <laughs> and I didn't do anything and, and I was miserable and I realized, no, I got to be with people. I have to leave my house. I And again, I'm self-employed, so I kind of hang out with my family a lot at the house and and it drives me insane because I have to talk, like to the point that I take my wife's orders to the post office just so I can see another face, smile, nod, drive, listen to some music, look at other human beings, be in society because you can be so out of it if you're just on your phone slash your, or your house, laptop, whatever you want to call it, your office space. Um, and by doing that, it really uh, really taught me a giant lesson of I'm not good alone. I should not be alone. I shouldn't be alone with my own thoughts. It wasn't safe. It wasn't healthy for me. And, and, and I also learned a lot that I – the other half of the reason was is I wanted to do it to see if I could just be okay being by myself mm. without – friends or or uh, or in basically i the views or point of views or or things from other people i didn't want their influence to affect me um i just wanted to figure out if i could be alone and be okay just like eh. and and honestly you're designed to be there are people that are listening to this and be like i could absolutely do it and you're very and that's awesome i but my personality could not do that um it my i feed off of this conversation and talks is how I grow out of my comfort zone. It's how I grow. I also noticed in that two, three month gap that I didn't even, when I was, I had a, like I was forgetting how to talk to people. I would go to the gas station and do stuff. I wouldn't make eye contact or I would like, oh yeah, yeah. And I would do stuff or I wouldn't chat. And it was like this, oh, what the, Mm. this is not you because you're naturally always been good at this, but you basically you stop going to the gym of talking and too direct that you're babbling and acting like a like stupid like you're just like uh, 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 and i was just like oh i have to stay up on my like your tools you have to stay up on who you are and what you are and um and and just feed into that yeah that so the so, longer you stay away from people the harder it is to get back into it then that's initially. honestly it's so get and i think that's it. what's going on with a lot of social media and things is people are comfortable in talking on social media and dm and then just uh, kind of talking good point but when we meet up in person or you go on a date with us people, we just did the other night, me and um, our friends, we went bowling and we saw a group across from us, three, four, well, it was like four couples from high schoolers on Valentine's Day. We don't really do, val- my wife and I are funny, man. We just don't celebrate. Wait, we hung out on Valentine's Day, didn't we? Or the day before? Oh, yeah. or it was that yeah. night. <laughs> you came over. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Like, I just had a kid. We, Christian we came see, over. Yeah, for real. Like, I just, 
Yeah, and and we were sitting there across from you know the bowling alley, had the booths together, and the couples across from us were all high school kids, but they were not talking to each other, kind of sitting. It was being awkward. They were on their phones, and they were like they would only go up when they were ready to bowl, and they would bowl, and it was kind of come back down and sit, and there was like no interaction. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the next generation. If we don't get careful. These kids are not going to learn how to communicate. And, and I'm not saying, look, evolution is going to happen. It's going to do what it's got to do and figure it out. But at the same time, I think the humans, no matter what, should always Cal still be talking to each dude, other. That drives me insane and so bad. And it made bad. me sad. It made us sad. Oh. We all stopped to recognize because I didn't even have to tell my wife or, the, you know, our friends, the couple we were with, they were like, you guys noticing this? And we noticed it like that, all of us. And we we're like, this is weird because in high school, we would have never done that. We were just, you're rowdy, you're funny, you're you're talking, you're silly or whatever. And they were like... They were just so awkward together. Like they didn't know how to be together physically. It was okay over the Instagram and things, but like as a couples, all four couples were very awkward, and and it was just it just bled. You could see it, and it was like, wow, ooh, mm. we got to be careful. So, don't do what I did, or do it. And, and look, there's got to be a balance, right? Maybe do it and learn for yourself. Like I'm saying, if you don't think that's you, try it, and <laughs> and you'll see really quick that oh. I gotta hang out with people. I gotta have someone care about me. I gotta have someone talk to me. I gotta gotta have a lunch date. And another another fun thing to do too for psychology wise that I noticed is um, if you every three months, let's say every three months or six months, psychology just basically says your your happiness can go up twenty percent um, for these two things. Uh, one, once a week, guys should just hang out with each other, and girls should too if they can figure out the time to kind of just do their thing. Testosterone will boost up. Men's testosterone naturally will all boost up if we just have a guy night. If guys like you and me are just chit chatting, now we're not doing the most manly like thing, That's but we're handy, hanging out. Testosterone <laughs> will build up. It'll go higher um, in the man if we have once a week. You, you just know you're. Oh, I've got guy time. We're gonna hang out. We're and again, it can be dumb stuff. Video games. It could be going out to eat a lunch and hang out. Whatever. But you got guy time for a minute. And then the other thing they noticed is um, if you have every three to six months. You have a big event to look forward to. So that's a little trip. Maybe it's Park City Hotel for the night, uh, a concert, um, a vacation, uh, whatever. Your your life will go by much happier, basically, is what they're kind of saying. They're like day-to-day little interactions won't bug you as much if you have something fun to look forward to. And again, it doesn't have to be extravagant, but whatever that fun is for you, and you're like, ooh, I'm excited. We're going to Disneyland in you know May, June. Okay, if that's your thing, then then that will help push through when you're having a shitty day right. or the interaction's bad or whatever. She's like, yeah. Because I know that helped for us when we went to Disney World, but like we were doing this Disney cruise, Disney World. We haven't done a giant vacation because we had just like worked for five years on our butts and like literally never taken a break. And so I was just always looking forward to this trip. And then, and then it was just, anyways, it was awesome because throughout those months, it was like struggling and problems and anything that would pop up, my brain would just say, but it's okay. Screw it. Cause you're going on Disney world, dude. You're going to go on a rides and you're going to have fun. You're going to watch your kids. And that's going to be the most exhilarating, fun thing, to, you know, whatever for you. And that was always, so when those little daily interactions or friends getting on your nerves or something silly, blah, 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 by having just literally one little, little thing to look forward to, it dramatically changed how I would about my days and my life and my weeks and things like that. And so it was like, oh, literally just dumb little things. It could be, again, a concert. could be whatever it is for you. That's all. So hang out with your friends. <laughs> Look forward yeah. to things. Try to set up events for yourself. And it's dumb. Just say, okay, this concert looks fun. Or let's go to a hotel this time. Or let's go to Yellowstone. Let's go on a road trip. Let's Whatever that little dumb thing is for you. And I say dumb is in, it, it can be minor. It, it, it just works. And, and I've noticed, uh, at least for me, it works. Let me put it that way. I Everything that. I say is always going to be opinionated, right? Like, yeah. take it how you take it. But for me, it worked. But I bet if other people tried out. And science said it, that too. That it would work Psychology. Out, yeah. that's, why, that's why I started it. That's yeah. why I started it. Well, who cares, it, man? I can it, say it's working. claim, do it. It worked right. for you. It did. If it worked it did. for you. It would probably work for someone else. It would. It would. And, I mean, we all know it would, too. Yeah. And, and the truth of it is... Um, it will work for you when you do it. So you should give it a whirl, Absolutely. especially if you're struggling. And fun thing about what Christian said that'll be fun for another conversation is just how when you do go dark and you do go to a place where you just wish somebody would come and show up for you, you almost you door, did it man, with yeah. the whole like, oh, they're going to miss me so much. It was, it was the expectations. silly 100%. That's and, what it was. And it's these expectations that are like not realistic at all. Mm-hmm. And it's almost setting us up for failure. In a That's certain exactly way. what it was. But you also set up your friends for failure. So notice that you do that with relationships 
and this is for everyone sure, that are yeah, listening yeah. right now. You do you do that a lot in relationships. I've done that in relationships. Of time. course, we do. We like, expect oh, that the partner's supposed to do yeah. that, that, that when they well, don't. Oh yeah, and it's like well, for like I'll give you an example, right? This is something so silly, but it's like. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, I love basketball. I'm obviously gonna go to a basketball game with you. By the way, I'm still waiting like, for my jazz ticket. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like halfway through the season, and I hadn't heard sure, from sure. him, and I was like, taking everyone else, it. taking Mo five times. Yeah, <laughs> like, yo, hey, you got my number, <laughs> yeah. right? Yo, hey, Just uh, I don't know if you remember, but we're homies, and we yeah. do this kind of stuff together. Yeah. Or it was. It wasn't even just the jazz game. It was like, hey, you went and did the racetrack without me. I've still got a few races there. And it was me putting expectations that I didn't even realize I was doing. And I even just, I decided, I'm like, dude, thanks so much. I don't know why I was even worried. But it was because I didn't even say anything to him. I never, I never said, hey, dude, let's go do this. Let's go do that. You've got a hook here. Let's go do that. And it literally, when he invited me to go to the jazz game, it was so funny because it was, I had just told him, well, I just told him, hey, dude, I'm going to go to Woodward this day. Come with me. And he's like, yeah, maybe. And then it was like sure. the next day, he's like, he hey, want you want to come back. to the jazz game? And I was like, oh, uh, maybe it's just because I hadn't actually invited anybody into my zone, into my space. I love that you said the zone. The space. Yeah. Cause it, yeah. Cause it, Honestly, it's daily interactions. Like Everyone has busy lives. We always forget that. I think that's the biggest thing I always forget, man, is that I got my own life. I'm sitting over here busy as hell, chasing two kids, doing da 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 yeah. But at the same time, so do they. Oh, yeah. They've got – and we think that, oh, why aren't they reaching out to me? Why aren't they – probably because – they're dealing with their nine to five. Oh, They've got the boss who's mad at them. They're coming home. They're grieving. And then they got a wife. Then they have their own well, kid. And they have, they their have life. no idea that you even expect that. They just don't exactly. know. They or have no know. clue. Like, I'll say this. I was so bugged that I was never invited <coughs> to play pickup basketball. This is last fall. Sure. So bugged. I was never invited to play. And I love basketball. I was just talking about this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I wanted to go play, and I was I but felt like I was the... never invited. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell, dude? I sure. love basketball. Yeah. I want to yeah. go play. Yeah. I know I'm not that great of a ball player, no, but I want to go yeah. play. That's the fact of, I'll yeah. say a couple funny lines. I'll throw yeah. <laughs> some three-pointers. Raindrops. <laughs> like, I'm ready to play. <laughs> exactly. And But I was never, like, given the opportunity, and I was so frustrated. So finally, I just started hitting up my buddy that's really good at playing ball, my buddy J.D. Lewis. And I'm like, hey, we're going to go play at Vasa. Let's go By play. By the way, that name just sounds like a professional football player. J.D. Lewis. He's a, he's a badass, man. You've got to be with that yeah. name. You don't James just Dalton name like, Lewis. He's a stud. But that he's name. Yeah, he, he, but he's really good at basketball. And so I'm like, let's go play, man. Yeah. And he would just kill me every time we played. We started inviting great. more That's how you more get people. better, by the way. You yeah. get beat, and then you want to get harder. But I just decided I wanted to play basketball, so I'm going to make sure that I'm going to go play basketball. And I started inviting one kid, then a few of our other friends, then we started inviting more people and more people. We play basketball now like three or four times a week, and I love it. Thanks for the invite. I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Full circle. I'm just kidding. Full circle. <laughs> Douchebag. Right, right back at you. You asshole. No, it's fine. I'm not. But... Uh, for for me, it, so you start picking it back up. You're doing your thing. And yeah. Then what? So I'm now playing basketball all the time, and I get the fill all the time. Taylor hates when I come home and brag about playing basketball, and I made a shot one time, and holy sure. cow, I'm so awesome. When, you know, but I'm getting care. my fill but that I finally wanted. You got your hobby. and I don't have to wait for anybody to ask me to play basketball. And I sometimes think, they're now carrying the torch, but a lot of the time it's me being like, hey, I'm going to go play tomorrow. Do you guys want in? Yeah. I'm going to play it this time. Who's coming? Yeah. And I'm the one who has to start it. And I, I feel like most of my life when I felt let down, it's been because I have expectations that somebody's going to come and pull me out and come take care of me. And that never works out. Instead of me just actually you making mean, it's funny. Happen. It's like how many times does that have to happen for us? And it wouldn't, guess what? It's still going to continue to happen to you because right. you know this is how many I'll times it's going to happen. Because still sabotage because it's just the way that I do it. For but myself. how many times does it have to happen for us before we realize that? Right, like yeah. that. What you just said—that it's oh, it's just I'm setting up unrealistic expectations for people that have no idea the situation, the, the yeah. way I'm feeling about this. How I'm—I've never expressed this. I've never told anyone about this. I've never reached out. I've never even tried to lift a finger to get the. I just think that somehow, Jason's supposed to know that this. Yeah, you know, I wanted to come hang out with you. We were supposed to go to the racetrack. We were supposed to go to the jazz game. We were supposed. Well, yeah. how have come you even invited me over and come swam in your pool lately? You know I like water. Exactly. You yeah, know exactly. it. Yeah. yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> how come we haven't taken a tub together, dude? <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever it is. Yeah. But pe people in general, especially myself, I've done that so much, man. I think it's part so of our personality. Much. And. Um, but we're getting better. 
Yeah, we're getting better. That's the key and, is we're getting better and, every and time. And I even did that with coaching too. I did that with coaching. So okay. I did personal so coaching, here. right? Yeah. And I would I would do the same thing. I'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to post about it for a little bit. I'm just going to keep coaching. I'm just going to do this. And it was like I let all of my like momentum totally slip away because mm. I wasn't pushing it. I wasn't okay. talking about it. Yeah. And it totally died out for a little bit. And okay. I was so bugged by it. I'm like, does it, don't people know that I want to help them? That I want to take care of them? I didn't post on social media anymore. I didn't do the stuff I was doing before. Yeah. And then I expected that it would be great. And it was like, dude, no. Like, all you post about now when you do post is like sports stuff. You never post about this. You never do this. What do you expect? Yeah. And so I, I love that. I guess I it's just that. like dropping expectations. And it's like, what are your, you were talking about agreements earlier. What are your agreements with yourself? Because there's a huge difference between expectations and agreements. And that goes with relationships, it goes with business, it goes with yourself. Absolutely. And I guess that's a conversation for another time, but sure, I guess yeah. in, in part for me, um, one thing I'm going to say for our agreement in this is that I'm going to show up here with you. I'm going to show up here with you 100% of the time and give it every, it, all of my eggs. I'm not going to hold any eggs back. I love it. And, and it's only when we hold back that we do a disservice to others. Yeah. Or in ourselves, obviously. Yeah. Um, because I know when we, it's the whole thing is sugarcoating, right? If we sugarcoat it, are we really helping them or did we just hear, oh, yeah, yeah, great You're job. You're doing bud. a great we, job. We spanked them on the butt and then yeah. just on to the next friend to probably sugarcoat them as well. Could I, did I say the wrong thing to this person? No, yeah. no, you're okay. Like, yeah. it's okay. Maybe they just didn't receive it the way. No, Correct, yeah. you totally did. Yep. You came off super creepy in the way that you had that approach that was terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's good to give people that kind of feedback. But, anyways, in this case with us, what I'm stoked about is that you invited me to be on here with you and do love. this podcast because I'm psyched to do a podcast. And one thing that I love that you said right before we even started this was you were like, dude, if we can help one person, if we can help one person, I'll be stoked. This will be worth it for me. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess after today's little ramble episode, if yeah, you felt cool it. something good from this, we'll call it the bramble episode. Yeah, I love it's it. It's the bro ramble. It is. It is. That's exactly <laughs> all it is. The bramble. If you, so, girls, by the way, if you really think that like guys are out there doing, but this is probably what we're doing. We're just chit chatting about yeah. life. Like most you of the time. You think we're talking about girls' butts? No, we are. it's not. But, yeah, I'm just kidding. it just comes up for a second <laughs> in between everything else. Okay, we did. We might have talked about butts and <laughs> abs and whatever, but no, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> but we're. I love it. <laughs> But the truth of it is, uh, this is what we're doing. We're doing the Bramble. And so if you had a good time in the Bramble episode today, mm -hmm. and you got some stuff from Christian and his vulnerability, you got some nuggets from us, man, let us know. Because we want to hear it. We want to know that what This is the only way we know if we're doing okay yeah. or if we just need to be quiet, which yeah. we won't. We'll just be quiet online. We'll just talk to each other still. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're still interested in hearing this, man, I think I couldn't agree more. And I honestly, like I said, there's no, it hit me like a sack of bricks one day. I just, when I called you out of the blue or texted and I was like, you're the one dude, because I've always wanted to do the podcast. I did it. Then I stopped because I started thinking, oh, what are the people thinking about me in this? And honestly, it was great. And then anyways, I just made excuses yeah. and made excuses and it was going to start up, made excuses. And then I just like, you know what, who better to choose than like, this guy who's basically a life coach who's very similar to me and thinks very similar but yet adds so much perspective into life and it's just anyways there's just i i couldn't think of anyone better and i was just like yeah, i have I to hit him so i took action that second i dm'd you and was like we gotta do this thing and you were like yeah done. dude it was and clear as done. day i was like hell yeah and dude. Clicked, you're man. the perfect dude to do and this throughout way. this whole conversation it's been only just solidified that I've like, yeah, absolutely. There's no other person I'd rather do this with. And, and, and rather, I hope we do change some other lives, you know, because that's so too. because I think that, and again, the, the hope is not that we can hang you on our wall and say, change life 16, but <laughs> that would be dope. Let us know if you Yeah, have. but if you did, then but, let us know. Yeah, please we'll, let us know. We'll, that means that we'll we're doing frame good. your words and put them we'll inside of... Uh, Christian's yeah. office yeah, room. Exactly. <laughs> Just kidding. Exactly. No, but but we do we do also want to know like, you know, what you guys want to hear. And topics, yes. Yeah. Oh. Let us know. Because we can ramble we, about everything. Uh, yeah. And today was the bramble. We yeah. said that that's what we we're gonna do today. Next week we're coming with actual topics. And we'll stay on and topic. And we're gonna stay on topic. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely gonna offshoot because this is we just can't help it. But the best way to explain uh, us in a cyclone for episode one. If yeah. you heard something is, you liked, then stay in tune. And this one's going to be long, man. This yeah. is this is a long freaking episode. Yeah. Um, normally, they're going to be about an hour, hour and sure. a half, something Whatever like that. Whatever we can do, yeah. Maybe shorter, maybe yeah. longer. Sure. Who knows? Depends on the episodes. But this is... Uh, this and guest. 
if you guys yeah. want to get some guests. Yeah, on yeah, here, yeah. We have to get you want a us to get on guests. here. Get them on here, man. Yes. We want to talk to some peeps. We're gonna for sure have some of our friends on successful people. And we're gonna have Listen some to big them. peeps, some some cool cool people to interview. So absolutely, it'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, let us know your feedback. Let us know what you want to hear. And uh, if you don't, fine. We're going to tell you some stuff anyway. So. Yeah, you don't have to listen. <laughs> yeah, we, we like you anyways. We're going to talk. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We we're doing this for our own good. It's, there's it's one true. person that's getting help out of this. It's me. It, to be honest, it's... Dude, I'm going to lose my voice. I, I, I don't want to kidding. pay for therapy right now. It's called a podcast. <laughs> that's, that's all it is, man. Podcast. Gets it all out. Podcast. Yeah. Which this, what's the name of the podcast, Ian? You're going to tell me. I think we might have to start our own, dude. I think really? We have to come up with a you don't want to come up with a name? The Walking Among Apes was the one in the past, but I we can get creative. Oh, is, I, I, you're the one. Who's... Can, walking Among Apes works. I like it. Only because it's just literally, look, we're all walking among each other, and we all have a billion stories, and, and who knows where it goes, but uh, maybe we'll just keep rolling. But this is new season, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and this is a uh, start. I, guys, this is going to happen a lot more. That's me. Fabrice I Brothers. Can, so starting Fabrice. off fresh. That's right. <laughs> I love it. So that's it, man. Well, sick, dude. Appreciate you. Till next Thank time. You. I yeah, appreciate absolutely. you, dude. Love You're you, kick-ass man. dude. And any of you guys, like I said, don't be afraid to ever hit us up. Don't whatever. Please, please. Yeah. We love interactions. At we love crave talking. Adventure. If you don't know how yeah. to spell that, crave, enter, n t u r e, crave adventure. Yeah. That's right. So and then uh, Colt at Colton Brockbank. Hit us up. That's it. Chat with us. Love you. Love I hope you. you have a great week. Hope uh, everything goes good and we'll see you next time. Till next time. Till next time.